Hello. For those who weren't already aware, I co-host a history podcast called Respect the Dead. Each episode, one of us takes the other on a deep dive into the life and times of a notable person or thing from history. The only requirement or restriction being that they have to be dead, and usually comedy ensues. But late last year, I presented a four-part series tracing the origins of the modern American militia movement from the white supremacist propaganda of the Turner Diaries to Ruby Ridge and Waco to the Oklahoma City bombing and finally to Columbine and the birth of the modern mass shooter. It got kind of heavy. I had a lot of nightmares while working on it but I'm very proud of the work. Ours is not a true crime podcast, and I didn't intend to continue covering mass killers, but I did think it was important to take a look at just one more as a sort of dreadful epilogue to the Oklahoma City and Columbine series. A killer who came to represent yet another shift in the zeitgeist of violent and resentful young men. Elliot Roger. Elliot was not the first or even most successful misogynistic attack. The École Polytechnique, forgive my French, massacre in Canada 25 years earlier was more than twice as deadly. But Elliot's crimes occurred at a time when a massive cultural backlash to mainstream feminism was bubbling to the surface, mere months before Gamergate and a little over a year before Donald Trump would announce what would be a successful campaign for the U.S. presidency. In this political and social climate, Elliot Roger, the Isla Vista shooter who'd left behind a 141-page manifesto blaming his crimes on rage and resentment towards women, became a sort of patron saint of incels and inspired more killings in his name. When I put together my script for Respect the Dead, I had about 12 pages of bullet points, a modest-sized script. I expected the final episode to be somewhere between one to two hours. But we ended up sitting down for one of the longest single recording sessions in the history of our podcast, something like four hours. I've pared it down to around two hours and 55 minutes, not counting the 33-minute bonus content that is exclusive to Patreon. Yes, there is a lot of dunking on Elliot Roger during our conversation because he was, among other things, a massive fucking lol cow. But I think there's some valuable insight in there too. Since the inception of my channel, I've always wanted to do a retrospective on Gamergate, the alt-right, and the cultural and political consequences of the early 2010s, so consider this your primer for that eventual video. Pay attention, students. There will be a test. Our entire conversation is hosted on my channel with Kaylin Conrad's blessing, and thanks to my sponsors over at Incogni. My last video detailed how private conversations and personal details were being shared on a number of private Facebook groups, but bad actors need not join a digital whisper network in order to find your personal information, because your information is being sold and published online by hundreds of data brokers. The good news is you have the right to protect your privacy and request data brokers on websites like Been Verified remove your personal information. The bad news is that there are so many of them that doing it manually is a process that can take literal years. Luckily, there's Incogni. Incogni automatically reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, and since many data brokers continue collecting your information even after they've removed it once, Incogni conducts repeated removal requests to ensure that your data stays off the market, and they do it at a rate that would be physically impossible to do yourself. The second I signed up for my Incogni account, they submitted 148 removal requests, many of which were honored immediately, and they're continuing to submit requests on my behalf at this very moment. It's really going to help me sleep at night knowing that it's just that much harder for strangers to find my home address, but even if you aren't a woman online and aren't particularly worried about doxing, you should care about data brokers selling your information. Do you get 400 spam likely calls a day? That's because these companies are selling your phone number to robocallers and even scammers. Incogni can help you finally get some peace. Now, here's the really good news. Incogni is giving my viewers 60% off their annual plan just by using my link in the description and entering code HOOTS at checkout. That's a full year of protection at 60% off by going to incogni.com slash HOOTS and entering code HOOTS at checkout. Protect your data and sign up for Incogni today. Thank you to Incogni for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to help me keep the lights on, head on over to patreon.com slash little hoot 
and sign up today. In addition to ad-free and early versions of most of my videos, my patrons and patrons of Respect the Dead will have access to a 33-minute bonus conversation that Kaylin and I have after the conclusion of this episode. Are you ready and settled in? All right, let's begin. Welcome back to Respect the Dead, the podcast where we don't. Sweaty, it's no surprise that everybody celebrated your demise and now worms are eating your eyes. So don't you worry your rotten head as you sleep in your sodden bed. It's time to respect the Hi everyone, I'm Hoots. I'm Kaylin. So 2014 was a big year for misogyny, you know, like mm, one of the greats. <laughs> yeah. You know, like like 1993 had the Macarena and 2017 yes. had Rose Golds. Mm -hmm. 2014 we had misogyny. It was very on trend. Was Everybody was doing trend. it. And like honestly, it did get old pretty quickly, but the boomers are still doing it, just like just every like one they of those other trends. trends. <laughs> They're still wearing their I'm with bacon t-shirts or whatever. <laughs> 2014 was the year we got Gamergate, and it was also the, the year that the world started paying attention to a little internet subculture known as incels. Gays. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you remember incels, right? <laughs> yes. They, they don't funk. And they're really, really mad about it. <laughs> yeah. For anyone who needs like a refresher course. And also, I wish I was you. <laughs> who, who, whoever is out there and needs a definition for <laughs> incel, like, I wish my brain was as like spotless as yours. <laughs> Mine is like filthy with all this garbage that we've piled into it from the internet. <laughs> Yeah, it almost feels kind of quaint to be like, anybody who needs a refresher on incels, <laughs> like... Ugh, Read your contrapoints. So nice. <laughs> anyway, for anyone who needs a refresher course on ancient internet history, incel is an abbreviation of involuntary celibate. Incels claim that the term involuntary celibate can be traced back to the 18th century. <laughs> Citation needed. <laughs> Monks. <laughs> but its usage, its usage and abbreviation on the internet can be traced to a forum created by a lesbian feminist in the mid-1990s called Ilana's Involuntary Celibacy Project. I knew misogyny was lesbian feminist fault. <laughs> and now finally we have the proof. <laughs> It really is like a, it, it is a villain origin story, isn't it? <laughs> that must make straight male incels so mad, too. <laughs> it's, a, like, it's a woman oh, feminist fault. <laughs> Alana originally coined the abbreviation Invisel, which was later changed to incel because Invisel is harder to say. And also it sounds like imbecile. Why did they leave her in charge? Like, come on. <laughs> Invisel? It was her <laughs> website. It was her you? GeoCities. <laughs> yeah. It was her GeoCities and people eventually bullied her into changing like, the term, which, like is, not e which is a good use of bullying. Not even fit to run a GeoCities <laughs> website. Like, come on. So Invisel. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> not to like dead name <laughs> incels but that's like fucking ridiculous <laughs> i can't believe we're coming down on the side of the male anti-feminists here <laughs> fucking canceled the early incel forums were just a place for people of all genders who couldn't get laid to connect and vent but by the 2010s they devolved into much more bitter much more explicitly misogynist places and the term incel evolved from a gender neutral designation to a presumed male designation uh, female incels did st still exist on these forums uh, in some small numbers but they became known as femcels and male cells. <laughs> 
cells were broadly re- referred to as incels. Male cells. Okay. One thing that I love is their insistence on like main characterizing everything. So like everything is viewed through their like super specific, really like incredibly narrow to the point of hilarity lens. <laughs> like everything is a kind of cell and like, there's no creativity behind it. They just put cell on everything. Like that year <laughs> I re- I replaced like most, most a sounds in words with my name, like K like you can't really think of one right now, but cable. I <laughs> yeah, li- literally everything. <laughs> like I bumped my knee on the cable <laughs> It's like, do you mean table? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh Things can't be about me for even a second. Can a That's girl have so, hobbies? That's so fucking annoying. I would have killed you. I would have like, I would have jumped through the computer screen and fucking throttled you. <laughs> Still less annoying than the like six months I prefaced everything with Lana Dell. Like, I'm going to the Lana Dell store. Did you Lana Dell want anything? <laughs> Okay, that's hilarious. That's less annoying than cable. For like 20 minutes. Like three weeks in. <laughs> Inseldom became part of what was broadly known as the manosphere, which included pickup artists and MGTOWs, men going their own way. <laughs> Do you remember them? It's so yes, fun to it's like so talk quaint. about ancient internet history. I have nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, I feel like I shouldn't. I know. It's like talking about cat memes. You're like, oh, my God, <sighs> MGTOWs. Remember them? <laughs> Weren't they quaint? <laughs> They're so cute. I wonder what ever happened to them. Did they, they ever went go their own, their own way? way? Yeah, that's why we <laughs> don't see them anymore. Away. Their own. Oh, that's nice for them. <laughs> I kind of want that. <laughs> Incels were a reactionary subculture, not just to feminism, but to other parts of the manosphere, especially pickup artists. In the early 2000s, Neil Strauss's The Game had popularized pickup artists. No, not which The Which was game. like tips and tricks on how to manipulate women into bed. You remember that, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was. So <laughs> I remember seeing them online and I was like, but but I don't want to. I remember seeing them out and about. Like you could always, oh, you could always identify. I didn't a go outside. Artist. Yeah. Oh yeah. You could always identify a pickup artist because they were wearing like one of the things in the game was like to wear like something attention grabby. So they would always wear like top hats. Out. A statement piece. Yeah. Or scarves. Like it, honestly, it would work on me. <laughs> like and honestly that just sounds like gay culture like if i went to like a gay bar and i saw somebody with a top hat i'd be like look at this campy bitch i'm in love i know like <laughs> I mean, to be fair some of it did work some of it did work because like some of the advice in the game was actually like good advice like taking an interest in your target's interest like the way they frame <laughs> it the way they gamify it is gross but yeah like taking like, taking an interest having in like, like a a polite conversation yeah <laughs> like, but they have to like make it like your target like you know like you're a big it, strong it's predator like, it's like find out what she likes and take yeah. an interest in it yeah some of it was like have confidence which is always like <laughs> attractive <laughs> but but like some of it very much didn't work because like wearing like a little feather in your cap is is a little it's a like that subculture women aren't got birds. so yeah we're not birds <laughs> that subculture got so wild like they all started dressing like steampunk magicians and it's like okay like one statement piece is like kind of fun but like when you've got like 10 cobbled together like it's, yeah, it's what's getting a little statement? out of control sweetie <laughs> like Please tell me the statement because it's <laughs> the feeling statement like is I should... do not interact. <laughs> yeah. Cover your drink. <laughs> Back away. Because a lot of pickup artistry was just like eccentric bullshit designed to sell you worthless masterclasses and party trick tchotchkes. Uh, mm-hmm. By the early 2010s, a whole online subculture of young men had built up around resentment for pickup artists um, and pickup artistry. And, and of course the women who weren't like easily duped by pickup artist tactics because like yeah. again like eventually we all caught on we're like oh guy wearing a top hat in a bar i know what this is about and yeah. <laughs> avoided those people like the fucking plague pua hate started as one of those online communities before evolving into a full-on incel forum 
And one of the incels that would frequent PUA hate in the 2010s was a young man by the name of Elliot Roger, who on May 23rd, 2014, would murder six people before unaliving himself in a misogynistic terror attack in Isla Vista, California. This one I do know about. Yes, and that is going to be the subject of our episode today. Elliot Uh Oliver Robertson Roger. Ugh, if you give a little white boy that many names, like you were asking for so much trouble. Yeah. Like John Wayne Gacy, other serial killers with three names. <laughs> Elliot, these He's other two four. names, Rogers. Okay. He's got See, four. <laughs> he didn't have a chance. Uh, you said a little white boy, and I will say he was he was half Asian. Um, and that is uh, an important detail <gasps> oh. because he was also very racist. I <laughs> I <laughs> Who, I'm mixing him up with someone who, and I don't know who, but it was someone also around this time. Most other um, shooters? <laughs> like literally all of them. I am remembering his picture now, and I did read his little diatribe. I don't know if I'm allowed to call it a manifesto, if that's like uncouth in 2024, but it's I did read through it and I remember him mentioning this. Yeah, that he had like a a big his his race was like a big sore spot for him. Yeah. And and he goes into like great detail about that in his um in his manifesto. Um speaking of, my very next bullet was Elliot left behind what the media often refers to as a manifesto, but it's really more like a memoir. Uh, And it was Mm -hmm. published in several outlets, including the New York Times. So a lot of my research for this episode is just pulled directly from that, as well as uh, Barbara Walters' interview with Elliot's father and a few other articles and documentaries on the events. I actually don't, like, most traditional manifestos, like political manifestos with, like, uh, detailing the uh, uh, terrorists' political aims, I don't read because I don't see the need to. I I made an exception for this one because it really isn't a manifesto. He's not saying like, I'm doing this because this is what I want you to make of the world. He he does very little of that. Most of it is just like- It's very him. like autobiogra- autobiographical. Auto- it's a, yeah, it's a memoir. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a 22 year old Like I remember him talking about memoir. going to parties and like, and getting, having people, I might be making this up, but like I remember him like, sitting at the edge of like a brick wall outside of a party or something that like he got some he got like snubbed at in some way or like he went in and he didn't actually talk to anyone and then was like mad that he didn't talk to anyone or something (laughs) and I was like this is legitimately relatable if you like strip out all of the like hatred from it it's like this is just a sad person but then you know the rage kind of kind of tempers out any like empathy or sympathy that I have. Yeah. But before we dive in, <laughs> okay, before we dive in, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna throw to you, Caitlin, for a second. Uh okay. you have read this, but very long you... ago. Okay. So. so I doubt you remember. Do you remember or can you guess what Elliot Rogers memoir festo was called? No, I will not remember. <laughs> and I don't. Uh, okay, maybe I'll try and guess though. Guess. I'll see if my brain. Can, I'll see if my my sad little sore brain can shut down for a second and pull something. Put your up. put yourself in that like sad, angry little place. What would you call it? Like probably like Goodbye World or something like that. Ooh, that's good. It's not as good as his though. <laughs> what it's is called- it called? My Twisted World, the story <laughs> of Elliot Roger. <laughs> no. <He's> so cringe. <laughs> Me on the diary that I started so I could act like Harriet the Spy. <laughs> Welcome my to my twi- Twisted World. Not everyone that goes into my mind comes out unscathed. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Content so warning, good. my dark mind. <laughs> It's giving <laughs> Wattpad fan fiction. It's so good. Oh, my God. Elliot Roger was born in London on July 24th, 1991 to Peter and Lee Chin Roger. 
Both of his parents worked in the entertainment industry. Peter Roger is a filmmaker and was the second unit director on the motherfucking Hunger Games. What? In 2012. Yeah. He was he was the second unit director on the on the Hunger Games. If you're watching this, I love the Hunger Games. I don't know what a second unit director is. It's obviously not very high up because it's like second unit. But you did amazing work. Why am I talking? In- <laughs> I always like look at the microphone. <laughs> you did amazing work, Peter. <laughs> Peter, great well work on the movie. Maybe you should have spent more time raising your son, etc. But <laughs> we all make choices. Sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad. And honestly, <laughs> I think The Hunger Games needed you more. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That was his, his true legacy. <laughs> Honestly, it's the greatest thing I ever... The happiest day of my life is when I saw my movie be born. <laughs> And Lee Chin was a film set nurse on Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and remained lifelong friends with Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. And according to Elliot, Lee Chin even dated George Lucas for a period of time before she met Elliot's father. She's a baddie. Yeah, truly. Because of his parents' connections, as he grew up, Elliot was invited to and attended the premieres of all the Star Wars prequels, The Hunger Games, and Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull, and he had a number of close family friends in the entertainment industry. He had like a very- He was living large. Yeah. He had a very privileged upbringing in the entertainment industry. Um, And I have to read you this quote of his recounting his time at the Hunger Games premiere. There were some actors and celebrities on the carpet with us, and the paparazzi yelled at me a few times to get out of the way as they were taking pictures of some (laughs) cunt actress. I discreetly gave those paparazzi pigs my middle finger. Elliot Roger will not move aside for a stupid, good-for-nothing, over-glorified actress, whoever the fuck she was. I didn't see. I hope he was talking about J-Law so much. I know. Um, (laughs) I love the idea. Of him being like, Elliot Roger moves for no bitch. <laughs> like, babe, why are you talking? Why are you talking like you're wearing a top hat? Like, why are you talking like-, like Norma Desmond? <laughs> like, what is wrong? <laughs> Elliot Roger knows moves for no actress. <laughs> like, okay. Honestly, if he had been born Slay. gay, he would have been so iconic. Like- I know. <laughs> 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 it's really sad when men turn out straight, especially it when is. they're incels. Because mm-hmm. if like if they were like, I just deserve like a hole to fuck, there are plenty of gay men that were like, oh my God, what a weird coincidence. Because I'm a hole to fuck. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, especially a twinky little boy like Elliot Roger. <laughs> okay, he would have cleaned the fuck up. Yeah, like he would have been would. beating them off with a motherfucking stick. <laughs> But like, unfortunately, no, no. <laughs> okay, now that I think about it, that phrase is terrifying. It's giving walking dead. Like, Stay back! <laughs> Stay back, I'm not my fucking lighter. faggot! Stay back! <laughs> no, no, it's voluntary. It's voluntary now. Iconic. <laughs> Elliot's paternal grandfather, George Roger, was a renowned photojournalist who worked as a war correspondent for Life magazine and took the first photos of the liberation of the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp in the Second World War. Like, he legit has got an amazing family. Like, every opportunity he could possibly Every opportunity. And his younger sister took those opportunities his younger sister was born in england in 1995 and she her name is georgia and she has worked as a cinematographer since so like it's not like we'll get to some of it but his father did try to like introduce him to people in the industry and like get him started on a career he made it weird he was just always super entitled and and rude to like everyone he met but even like Rude, entitled, rich people get to surround themselves with people that are like after their like wealth and connections. Right. Like he even still could have been a piece of shit and cleaned and up had something, yeah, yeah, and like been able to build a a pretty decent, like a better life for himself. Maybe not like ethically, but like a more stable and sustainable one than like most other incels mm-hmm. that you you hear about. Yeah. 
So yeah, this is like a very well-connected, respected family in the media industries. When Elliot was around five, his family relocated to Woodland Hills, California, so that Peter Roger would be nearer to Los Angeles and have more directing opportunities. The Rogers at this time enroll Elliot in a private school called Farm School, which sounds so cute. <laughs> I love and it. The first friend he makes in America is a girl, and the girl is named Maddie. Elliot remarks how ironic this is in his memoir. Quote, the first real friend I made in the United States was a girl named Maddie Humphreys. Isn't that ironic? The first friend I made in the United States was a girl. She was the first female friend I've ever had, and she would be the last. I was a five-year-old boy playing with a girl my own age, just like any normal boy would do. I was enjoying life in a world that I loved. I was happy and completely oblivious to the, of the fact that my future on this world would only turn to darkness and misery because of girls. <laughs> this girl, who was my friend, Maddie Humphreys, <laughs> would eventually come to represent everything I hate and despise, everything that is against me, and everything that I'm against. I was playing innocently with this girl in the man that all children play. We even took baths together. It was the only time in my life that I would see a girl my age naked. When I think about the experiences I had during my friendship with her, it makes me think ominously of the fact that all children, boys and girls, start out the same. We all start out innocent, and we all start out together. Only through the experiences and circumstances of growing up do we drift apart, form allegiances, and face each other as enemies. Literally, none of that is true. There's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to say I had enemies at five years old. <laughs> Skill that issue. Is iconic. That is iconic. <laughs> when you're an angry little gay kid who's getting like laughed at, everyone's your enemy. Like I easily can relate to like sitting down and like writing like I fucking hate everyone. Welcome to my shitty little life. Because like that's what I was doing at 11. But like... <laughs> My Twisted no. World by Kaylin Conrad. Yeah. <laughs> Age 11. <laughs> and it's like... He didn't write but, it until he was 22. You were so no. advanced. Oh, yeah. And it's a little more appropriate when you're a, a small, small 11. child being like, wow, things have really changed since I was five. <laughs> it's like, you're 22, babe. Like, yeah. Of course they have. <laughs> It's so embarrassing. <laughs> like the last time I had a female friend, I was five. And it's like, yeah, that probably has something to do with why you're such a fucking weirdo. Cause like, I mean, so am I. And I was socialized by by having like all like girlfriends growing up. But like clearly that helped in a lot of ways. <laughs> where like I was like, mm, you know what I really miss? Taking baths with five year old Maddie. It's like, well, yeah. well well, well there's it's like a last time I saw there. a girl my age naked and I'm like well that's <laughs> there's a lot Still to unpack issue. and I'm guessing we are not going to be unpacking it I mean I think like part of the reason I included that quote is it's demonstrative of like a pattern certainly in Elliot's work and I think in a lot of like incels where in his memoir he repeatedly complains about not having things that he has like yeah. he he has female friends he has people like try to talk to him and every step of the way like in his memoirs in his own words and also based on the testimonies of like people who knew him is like people would try with him and then he would reject the very mm -hmm. thing he said he wanted and then make that the world's fault. And I feel like yeah. he is emblematic of, I, I feel like that's why like so many incels have like come to worship him as a God is because like, there's something about this like entitled mindset where you're like, well, I want this, but not like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I just want a girlfriend. It's like, Oh, I'll date you. And it's like, no, no, no. See, you are a three. And I am an eight because if you measure this, like this, whatever this little part of bone is called. That's the difference between a three and an eight, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> Which you are. Eventually, Peter and Lee Chin Roger would get divorced. And very soon after, Peter would start dating a Moroccan actress named Sumaya Ako Akabone. I think that's how you say it. Sumaya Akabone. 
Peter and Sumaya would get married in 1999, and Sumaya would become Elliot's stepmother, eventually giving birth to his half-brother, Jazz Roger. Jazz is a cute name. Jazz is a cute name. Yeah. Like apples, like jazz apples. Yeah. Or jazz tap and ballet. Mm-hmm. Mm. As he grew up, Elliot and Sumaya's relationship would grow increasingly contentious, and he dedicates a lot of his memoir festo to recounting the details of several of their arguments. Memoir festo is so cute. Congratulations. That's my term. You, That's what you I deserve credit. I know. Well, obviously, you deserve credit for that. So I just. <laughs> I deserve a Pulitzer. <laughs> and a Webby, whatever the fuck that is. And an EGOT. Yes, her too. Elliot Roger is an unreliable narrator, obviously, and he's trying to depict himself as a tragic hero, but it's like really interesting to read how the real people still kind of seep in through his retellings. You can really feel Sumaya's frustration and her attempts to try and raise her sullen, bitter stepson right. Like mm -hmm. he he really tries to paint her as a villain and like it it's impossible to ignore like the real woman who's like coming through between the lines of his work. Elliot's memoir Festo contains the expected themes of loneliness and rising bitterness, as well as really shallow displays of wealth and privilege. He needs to tell the reader about every overseas vacation he'd ever taken, <laughs> whether or not he was old enough to remember it, every expensive gift he'd ever been given and every designer brand he'd ever worn. I feel like I remember him referring to things like by, by the designer. Am yeah. I making this up? Like would he no. be like 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 my blank glasses or I put on my mm -hmm. like my Gucci belt or whatever. Like it's a very like forced and performative kind of like opulence and wealth, which like people who are actually like who are just like naturally wealthy and not trying Don't not naturally wealthy but like who Old aren't money. trying to put on airs yeah yeah it's just like, he's very middle class yeah like he he is not he is not struggling but his parents probably make in the upper like over the course of his life for the most part make in the like upper you know six figures i think at one point his dad like has a contract where he makes like low millions like like 1 million so like he's <laughs> yeah. he's 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 not struggling but he's also like he you're you're absolutely right like he's very much uh, these these performative displays of wealth are to kind of like try to prove himself and there yeah. were like lots of youtube videos of him showing off his like ugly designer clothing it was ugly. That's the it other was, thing. Yeah. These people always go for the ugliest fucking shit too. No taste. Like the 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 brown Louis Vuitton bag with the like the pat yeah. the the, the brand or the designer symbol pattern. Like ugly as fucking shit. So the ugly. Big Gucci belt with the like <laughs> the buckle. It's always gotta have the logo. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. I'm not here for it. He does look like it though. He that's that's what you think when you're like a, I mean, twenty two is a little less of an a excuse, little old, but, but like yeah. a, as like a teenager or whatever, being like, look at my little coach purse. Like, sure, yeah, go yeah. off, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I definitely had friends that wore ugly Armani Exchange t shirts yeah. just to brag <laughs> exactly. in high school. Yeah. But like, if you don't grow out of that by the time you go to college, like something is wrong. Yeah, and it's embarrassing. Like people notice. Yeah. His obsession with class and consumerism sometimes makes makes him feel almost like a satire of himself. Like it's giving like Wattpad Humbert Humbert. Like <laughs> it's it's truly like it is a fascinating memoir manifesto to read because like I don't think he realizes how hard he's dunking on himself. They never do though. No. He is like a parody. He's a parody of himself. I think I've got some of my hair stuck in my lip gloss. I'm like, now I feel it too. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Sympathetic, Sympathetic hair in my lip gloss. <laughs> No! <laughs> Let me do it too. <laughs> Fuck you, Kaylin. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> so 
someday we're going to have like a an I know who killed me thing. Like one of us is going to get kidnapped and our leg amputated by some murderer and the other one's yeah. going to feel like sympathetic pains. And oh, our 100%. leg is going to sympathetically fall off. I'll wake up in the middle of the night like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do that anyways. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it's just easier if it's me. <laughs> it's probably fine. <laughs> that's that's the only way I wake up actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot I'm not a fish again. Sorry. In your bed. <laughs> Some years after his parents' divorce, he expressed indignation when his mother needed to downsize and move into an apartment. Quote, <laughs> my mother decided to move to an apartment in Woodland Hills. I reacted indignantly. An apartment. <laughs> I had never lived in an apartment before, and I always thought of apartments as being poor and low class. I would be embarrassed to admit it to anyone. The like the abject disgust for like the most common place people live in a city is like so funny. It's like, ew, a car? You take <laughs> a car to school? I take a limousine. I take a limousine. A limousine? <laughs> yeah, and it's like your mom has to downsize because your mom has to downsize because your dad moved the whole family to an expensive city and then divorced her. Like, what do you expect her to do? Okay, but also, like, he's obviously never seen Gossip Girl. Like, some of those fucking apartments are, like, more expensive than houses. I'm sure, like... Oh, yeah. I'm sure this one wasn't. But, like, still, fuck you, you little rat. Yeah, no, lots of celebrities in LA live in in apartments. They're nice apartments with incredibly yeah. expensive rents, but yeah. lots of them live <laughs> in apartments. Like apartment does not mean cheap. Like yeah. the amenities alone end up being so fucking expensive because like when you live in a house, right. you have to do everything yourself. People mm -hmm. that are rich don't want to do everything themselves. They want doormen and like people to like come in and clean yeah. and stuff like <laughs> Like, bitch, and all those fancy travels, you never went to New York. Right? Oh, wait, where does he live? <laughs> Woodland Hills, California, here in LA. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Another recurring theme in his memoir, Festo, is his diminutive stature and physical weakness. Elliot was... <laughs> just a little guy! <laughs> He's just a little, just a little <laughs> birthday boy. I'm so tiny. I can't even <laughs> lift a pee. But he's just, so mad about it. Caitlin is so sorry. mad. I'm so tiny. I can't even lift a pee. I'm it's just like picturing that. him like beside a a piece of spaghetti, but like it's like log sized for him. He's like trying to <laughs> lift it up. Like when when you say small, like I'm I, I'm probably going a little too far to like like sub borrower levels. Like but Tom like, Thumb. Yeah, but like Tom Pinky. Tom Pinky. Yeah, he like again like if he if he had just been like a gay little twink, he would have been like, I'm so skinny. Oh my god, I'm so skinny and my tiny. My wrists are so small and dainty. Everyone says I look like Nicole Richie. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the I was at Prada yesterday, and the girl thought it was Nicole Richie. Isn't that oh crazy? my god? Isn't that so hilarious? <laughs> I had to be like, no, my parents still work. <laughs> Elliot was a very small child, only around five and a half pounds at birth, and he'd remain pretty slight for his entire life. His autopsy report stated that at death, he was five foot nine and only 124 pounds. So he was he was very underweight. That's that's what well, are you are you figuring out the BMI now? <laughs> Sorry, my brain just <laughs> shut down for a second. I was like, no, 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 because that's like three inches shorter than I am. Like that's not short. Like five nine. Five nine is average. Well, I'm but one twenty four inches. That one twenty four is very bonkers. small. It's very yeah. skinny. That is like teen girl. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like he's very small. Was he ill? I don't think so. He describes eating a lot when he hangs out with family. Maybe he just had bonks metabs. I think he had a very like, fast metabolism, and I think probably he didn't eat a lot when he was on his own. You know? Okay. He's, yeah, he's very thin. Like He lived somebody, at home? 
somebody should have put some meat on his bones. At the end of his life, when he was an adult, he he lived in Isla Vista. He was going to college, and his parents were like paying for an apartment and stuff. Um, okay, so, so he, he probably wasn't cooking for himself. Like, yeah, he's probably eating just you know like ramen or like whatever the fuck. Yeah, oh, he probably would ramen eat a that, day. But like, <laughs> maybe he didn't eat because he was too good for the garbage food that was around him. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> It's like, ew, I'm not going to eat any of the disgusting crap I know how to cook. College students eat that. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> ew, poor people eat that. What is that, pasta? No. Oh, I, I couldn't possibly eat what the Italians eat. <laughs> low class people. I am like super Italian about eating pasta, so I couldn't relate. Mm, yeah. You love marinara. Ugh. I actually hate marinara. It's the only sauce I won't buy. And not just because it's like a little triggering now. (laughs) (laughs) In My Twisted World, Elliot recounts several (laughs) anecdotes. Do you love it when I repeat the name of the Yeah, never stop. (laughs) uh, In My Twisted World. (laughs) Did you watch Jaria? Yeah, uh, a, I think I'd only seen like a couple of episodes. There's a television show that's on in like most of the episodes, I would imagine, that they turn it on and it's like, tonight on Six Sad World. <laughs> and it's like all the like failings of society, but just like the My Twisted World. Every time you say it in my in my head, I hear a, tonight <laughs> on My Twisted World. <laughs> tonight <laughs> on My Twisted World. Like what in the Jinko jeans is going on here? <laughs> He's so funny. Like <laughs> he's hilarious. Like if he hadn't been a little incel murderer, I definitely would have been friends with this freak. He sounds like, hilarious. Like if he had just I don't know. Remember when he called been... Jayla a cunt? <laughs> <laughs> it would have been like way funnier if it was like someone like like some some other like who was uh who played Effie? I don't know. I've never actually seen The Hunger Games. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no. me neither. I like so much better than that kind of stuff. I hate all of that, especially <laughs> Rue. In My Twisted World, Elliot <laughs> recounts several anecdotes of personal disappointments at being too small or too weak. The first of which was <laughs> the first of which was a story about getting turned away from the Jurassic Park ride at Universal Studios as a child <laughs> because he didn't reach the minimum height requirements yet. His parents took him on the E.T. ride instead, and he said he was terrified of it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) I can't imagine Jurassic Park would have been very much fun. I know. Well, he was like, I loved dinosaurs, so I wanted to go see the dinosaurs. So the, like, Jurassic Park ride is like a log flume ride with, like, a huge drop. And the E.T. ride is just, like, a gentle children's ride. (laughs) He was, like, terrified of the E.T. ride. Like, baby, I don't think you would have liked the Jurassic Park ride. No matter how much you say you like dinosaurs. I think when kids say they like dinosaurs, it's like a purple purple (laughs) stegosaurus in a coloring book. And not, like, a horrible animatronic nightmare monster (laughs) with teeth as big as your tiny little body. (laughs) Yeah. That they, your body that's so tiny, they wouldn't let you on the ride. <laughs> oh, God. He's such a loser. I love it. He's such a loser. Also, like, I'm, I've been on that ride, like, at least half a dozen times. And as an adult woman, like, every time I go down with, like, the lap bar the way that it is, it's, like, one lap bar that everybody in the row shares. Like, Do you feel like I almost fall out? out of the seat every single yeah. time. Yeah. So, like, there's no way, like... Anyway, in middle school, he started to notice that he was lagging behind the other kids in the height department. So he decided to start playing basketball because he'd heard that basketball makes you tall. As he grew older, much younger That's kids adorable. would try- I know. It's so cute when kids get things backwards. I love the chicken or the egg of it all. And basketball players are tall, so I'll play basketball so I can get tall. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. As he'd grow older, much younger kids would join him to play and they'd absolutely destroy him on the court. <laughs> 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 he sucked at it. I love it. I know, like, literally, if he had grown up to do anything else, all of this would be, like, iconic. <laughs> yeah. Like, this would be cute. 
if he grew up to like become a comedian or something and like yeah. made jokes at his own expense, like yeah, like we are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if he had just become a podcaster instead, and podcasted about himself. <laughs> okay, if he had made a pot, just made a podcast called My Twisted World, and it's just oh like God, yeah. all these little stories without the misogyny and and shit, yeah. obviously. But like, but no, but no, we couldn't even have that. When he reached young adulthood, one of his parents' friends suggested that he start taking martial arts classes to build strength and confidence, so he started <laughs> taking karate classes. The following quote is Elliot recounting another student at the karate class he was enrolled in at the age of 19. I was particularly annoyed with this one 12-year-old kid who seemed to think he was better than me because he was a brown belt and I was a novice white belt. I bet he thought he could beat me in a fight because of it. Ha! No chance in that. It was annoying, but it amused me at the time. You are 19 years old and you're talking about a 12-year-old. <laughs> ha! It was annoying, but it amused me at the time. Did it? <laughs> And Did it being threatened by a middle schooler? Because you're still talking about it. Like <laughs> yes. I'm not like years later remembering like that time I was so much better than someone that like I was like amused by it. Like yeah, he's been seething. That... <laughs> he's seethed pill. He's a little <laughs> seethe cell. <laughs> he's a little seethe cell. When he closes his eyes at night to go to sleep, he sees, <laughs> he that, sees that brown old. belt. <laughs> That brown belt middle schooler flashes of that fucking brown sixth belt. grader, <laughs> like art film, like just like flowing through the air like a ribbon, <laughs> just like All over the sea, over a cliffside. <laughs> so beautiful. Well, like, soft casually music place. So, like like every like in a interval like lit by a a lighthouse <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my Aww, twisted so life. <laughs> That's a beautiful opener to my twisted life. Like, <laughs> title oh, card yeah. and fade to black. Da, 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 it's like, you'll da, 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 get what it means later. It's like yeah. our rosebud. And then you're our like, brown oh, belt. Oh. <laughs> oh, brown belt was the brown belt. I get it now. <laughs> In his 20s, he'd try bodybuilding to improve his physique, and he'd become an active poster on bodybuilding.com, which is a forum <laughs> overrun with incels, still to this day. Okay, it's very funny that he didn't go on, like, Reddit or whatever. He went to bodybuilding.com like a boomer. That's so <laughs> yeah. funny. He went to bodybuilding. <laughs> Literally. He was like, I want to start learning how to bodybuild. B-O-D-Y. <laughs> it's like... When people look things up in movies, yeah. or they just go to like bodybuilding.com. Like, like, <laughs> From about the age of puberty on, Elliot develops into a painfully shy and anxious young man. He changed schools several times due to trouble with anxiety and alleged bullying, but it's really hard to say like how bullied he actually was. After the shooting, former teachers and classmates would claim that Elliot was exceedingly shy and withdrawn, and that even when other students like tried to reach out to him and include him, mm -hmm. he would usually just rebuff them. Like the times he, he was actually... too good for them. Yeah. So it's it's like not certain that he was actually bullied. I think for the most part, people just like left him alone because he seemed like he wanted to be left alone. The times he'd actually join other kids at lunch tables and stuff, he'd just like sit there in silence, apparently. So like even his attempts to make friends were just like putting himself in the area of other people and expecting them to do the work. I have like so little sympathy for this mm. because like – like, I have sympathy and then I have none immediately after once I, like, think about it for, like, five more seconds. Because, like, I was able to make friends despite being, like, incessantly bullied, never knowing if, like, the person I was going to talk to was going to be, like, fuck off, faggot, and, like, make a joke of me to the entire school. Like, you know what I mean? And I still went out of my way to be like, oh, I know this person and I realize we have like a similar interest. So like the next time I see them like reading Animorphs or whatever, I'm going to go up and be like, I love this one. Like I'm actually like a huge stan. I'm a stanomorph. Yeah. And Homeboy couldn't do it. Like, I have sympathy for him like being being shy and feeling oh, like yeah. he's unable to talk to other people. Where my sympathy stops is him therefore resenting the people 
who yes. didn't get to know him because he wasn't interested in yeah, trying. Yeah, fair. You know? I think obviously like everything that comes after it is like informing <laughs> the way I'm looking at this. If it was like yeah. literally anyone else, I wouldn't be like, oh, I could do it. So why can't you? I'm like, I, I definitely had like a more intense right. and serious bullying situation. And I still was never that like, I never turned into like a fucking monster because of it. So I'm sort of exactly. like looking back and being like, well, that's on him, but I right. I don't know. I don't know how the human brain works. I'm not a brainologist. I know. Maybe there's I can't remember something that was going on with him. I can't remember how much of this, I, if any, I put in my notes. Um, but he he did um, later, I think later in his teens, um, get a diagnosis of autism. Okay. Um, and of course, like 2014 at the time, everybody was like trying to blame the autism for the shooting as well oh. um, which is like but his it seems like his painful shyness and his like inability to like start a conversation with a stranger was related to the autism and again like i okay. have sympathy for that and like there yeah that's a different there were yeah and there were interventions that probably he didn't get because you know because because of the because of his autism but like yeah. again my sympathy only extends so far. Like when that turns into homicidal resentment. Like Yeah. Go on a an autism forum on how to talk to people and not an incel forum on how to talk to people. Like right. there <laughs> you definitely should be reaching out for community and resources. It's just like mm -hmm. so ugly that there are places on the internet perfectly tailored to funnel young men young men into this way the really yeah. horrible ones and not the ones that'll actually lead them to have like healthy happy lives where they're like living exactly how they should be living which mm -hmm. is as themselves in community with other people and instead into like hateful little gremlins that spend all their time online like learning how to hate themselves and everyone else more and more mm-hmm so these these stories by his former teachers and classmates seem to be corroborated uh, with stories of other people who knew him um, and even by his own words. As an adult, his idea of going out to meet women was literally just going outside and walking around his neighborhood and expecting strangers to approach him and talk to him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like when he was living with his mother, he would literally just like walk around his neighborhood in circles and hope to run into a tall, pretty blonde woman, which was his mm -hmm. type, and that she would approach him and talk to That's him. That's brand new. Yeah. And that he was bitterly disappointed when he walked around the neighborhood and didn't run into a strange, tall, pretty blonde woman. <laughs> just like some, some, like a Nordic princess, just like. <laughs> Casually Lost in street. Woodland Hills. <laughs> like really looking for like a 22-year-old like 5'9 twink to like yeah. <laughs> to claim her. <laughs> like what the fuck? Which again, there are like there are like six foot tall Nordic women who who wanna find a little five foot nine twink. Yeah, but they're probably not picking them up off yeah. the road. <laughs> like they're not just wandering around your mom's neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're going to places where they think men might be. Like yeah. <laughs> when he lived on his own in Isla Vista, his plan for meeting women was to get dressed up in his finest designer clothes mm. and sit outside of a Domino's pizza chain and hope that women would approach him. And when they didn't, because that is a fucking insane tactic to use to meet anyone, much less somebody that you want to date. He came to resent women as a whole for rejecting him. And it's like, honey, nobody rejected you. They just thought like, that's a super overdressed man waiting for a pizza. Like, huh, wonder where he's going. He looks nice. Yeah, he must be going to meet his girlfriend later. He's yeah. awfully dressed up. Or let's be honest, nice. he must be going to meet his boyfriend meet his later. Boyfriend. He's awfully dressed up. <laughs> I wonder which of them is going to be able to have pizza tonight. <laughs> it's probably not him. It's not him. That's a pretty little twink. Oh, his boyfriend's sure eating a lot. <laughs> Hope he saves him a slice for after. <laughs> Us outside the pizza place walking by him. Literally. <laughs> okay. Have you ever considered that you might have been one of the people at the pizza place? Because didn't well, you live 
No, or did you I've not never live lived there now. I've never lived in I mean I didn't live there then. Um, okay. And okay. I I've never lived Isla Vista is like up in Santa Barbara. So like his mom <laughs> and his dad and, and I don't know any of the places. That's like an hour and a half north of me. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. I was um, like, LA, how big could it possibly be? Yeah. Woodland Hills is like closer. It's it's okay. like a little bit up north. And like his mom and dad moved to wood moved the family to Woodland Hills so that his dad could be closer to LA, but gotcha. so that they could live, you know, somewhere where they could afford to have like a house with a family and that kind of thing. Santa Barbara is very nice. Okay. The kind of people that go to Domino's are the kind of people that have apartments. Yes. Like people with Especially in a people, college town. Yeah. Like <laughs> He, he's really a like do you do you not know someone who can get you into a yacht club because like that no. sounds like where you want to be like yeah. it sounds like you want to be somewhere where you where other shallow pretentious people are going to admire your shallow and pretentious attempts at displaying like wealth and privilege and class and like like status like <laughs> <laughs> no bitch going in to go pick up like a hot, fresh, and ready to order or whatever is gonna like stop some guy sitting outside and be like, "Do you mind if we fall in love?" <laughs> like, yeah. Again, a guy who's like overdressed for the occasion sitting outside of a Domino's, like yeah. that is a weird detail to me. Like, and and I think if I were like one of those like pretty blonde girls walking around Southern California that he wanted to pick up, and I saw him. Like my thought would be like, oh, he's he's awfully dressed up for anyway. somebody getting dominoes. Anyway, yeah. like, <laughs> time to go get my dominoes. But yeah. also the the in my PJs. Like I'd be walking around in my yeah. PJs. I'd be like, I'm not going to approach him. I look like fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just like here to I'm pick on this my way up to because pizza. delivery is nine ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, I can't afford delivery. I literally wiped a face mask off with a dry towel. <laughs> and now I'm outside so with my real. sunglasses on. <laughs> and if I took them off, everyone would see my like busted face. Literally. Like, <laughs> like raccoon eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like hungover as shit, which is why I'm eating Domino's. Like <laughs> the only time I would have Domino's. <laughs> like this is such a bad. Okay, why didn't he go to where to meet girls.com? Because none of them say to sit outside in a Domino's parking lot. No. Like. That is unhinged. Like, Elliot. Elliot, girl, what are you expecting? He clearly knows how to Google things. So, yeah. like, do that. Because not even the incel, incel forums are going to be like, go sit outside at Domino's. If he had told them that, they would have been like, what the fuck, dude? Like, that's weird. Like, you're going to go to a bar or something. Like, also, his type is tall and skinny. Like, what skinny <laughs> girls are going to Domino's? Okay. Nobody the, – the type he's talking about is not, like, a natural body type. Like, no. he wants, he wants like, model, rail thin. And, like, homegirl is not getting, like, Cineparts and breadsticks. <laughs> like <laughs> – no. Like, do you know who goes to Domino's? Normal <laughs> <Me>. people. <laughs> like me when I'm hungover. <laughs> I'm just like I need something to soak it up. <laughs> okay. Speaking of oh, Domino's. Oh my God. I want Domino's. Do you want to order or, some? <laughs> yes. Or whatever else comes up in the following ad. It's gonna be something transphobic. <laughs> <laughs> it's Not gonna be like Kelly what J. is a woman? <laughs> Oh my god, can you imagine if we got sponsored by Domino's? I would legit get sponsored by Domino's, but they probably after we just like ragged on them, how it's only for like hungover people who live in apartments. <laughs> <laughs> only only for chubby hungover <laughs> girls with raccoon eyes. And apartments. <laughs> uh, Domino's perfect for those low class people who live in apartments. <laughs> Thank you. 
As an incel, he also resented the men who were having sex with the women he felt entitled to, as well as any other young people who were just living their lives and having fun and doing things that he felt he was entitled to but wasn't getting. It was so DeLulu that Elliot seemed incapable of even recognizing the times he was living the life he felt denied. There's this like <laughs> incredibly frustrating anecdote he tells about a time he was invited on a trip to France by a family friend. Quote, in France, the legal drinking age is 16, so I was able to drink alcohol at a bar. It was astounding. For those three weeks, I had the faintest taste of what life was like for normal young people. The experience of hanging out with a group of young people, boys and girls, and enjoying life was something I never did before. It really turned my whole world around for that short amount of time. So this is what everyone else gets to experience. I thought to myself with jealousy, this is what you are experiencing right now, Elliot. Why are you jealous so of yourself? So this is what everyone else gets to do. People like me make me sick. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh my God, it makes me want to tear my hair out. Like, I want to yeah, take this dead boy bonkers. by the shoulders that's and bonkers. shake him. <laughs> like, that's like being like knee, dip, knee deep in bus and being like, how come I never get to fuck? It's like, babe. <laughs> Babe, you're doing it right Pay now. Pay attention. If you just if you just hold on to this and recreate this, doing whatever you possibly did to get involved in this, things will get better. Oh, it, it makes it, was, it really bothers me. Like literally, uh, this guy is going around also being like, "I don't have any friends," and it's like, "Well, you clearly had friends who were good enough to invite you to France and take you out drinking with them." It. Like, <laughs> unreliable narrator is like she's stretching it a little <laughs> like this He's is so delulu imagine writing yeah. this down and not Completely. having a moment where you and go not, yeah oh, oh. yeah <laughs> you know what i'm going to i'm going to drag this file over to the trash bin <laughs> and i'm going to go outside touch was some grass was this typed or was this written handwritten it was typed it was typed oh wait mm. maybe it was handwritten as well no it was typed it was typed I was picturing like a cute little diary and now I'm upset. Yeah. No, he had handwritten journals, but then he typed this up and he okay. emailed it to a bunch of people. So Elliot also secretly harbored incredibly racist sentiments. He thought non-white people were lower class and uglier than white people. <laughs> and he well. was repulsed by the idea of interracial couples. He was deeply ashamed of being half Asian and dyed his hair blonde for a time to pass as more European, which is like so. Again, like he was pretty, and yeah, like he was. I think all biracial people are really pretty, but like he was gorgeous. It's it's very. There's a lot that comes up in his story where you're like, okay, like I can kind of see how like this isn't at like where like. This isn't coming from him. There is like so much that he has probably like read online or like seen. Right. Like if you if you're in like incel circles and stuff like that, like they are super fucking racist. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be internalizing that about yourself as well, even though they're mostly talking right. like negatively about women. But the, like a lot of it is just like what makes you disgusting as a right. man. Right, and it's like, like no woman will ever love you because yeah. you're half Asian. Yeah, and he's getting he's getting that that shit pumped into him every single time he goes to these sites. So it's like, I get it. Yeah, on PUA hate, one of Elliot's posts read: "Full Asian men are disgustingly ugly, and white girls would never go for you. You're just butthurt that you were born as an Asian piece of shit, so you lash out by linking these fake pictures. You even admit that you wish you were half white. You'll never be half white, and you'll never fulfill your dream of marrying a white woman. I suggest you jump off a bridge." Whoa. Yeah. Obviously, some a reply that he said to a yeah, yeah. Asian poster. At a party in the months before the shooting, Elliot would see a full Asian man chatting with a white woman while he was drunk at a party, and he would start hurling abuse at them, causing other partiers to intervene. So he got, like, really aggressive at even the idea of, like, Asian men being friends with white women. Does he say why? 
Like, is it like I can guess, um, but like, does he actually like say it outright? He uses the term chatting up. So I think he assumes that the Asian man is trying to date or fuck the white woman and he starts hurling racist abuse at him. So, like, he doesn't deserve to be with the white woman is the mm-hmm. issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But again, it was just like two people talking to party. Like they might have been boyfriend and girlfriend. They might have been flirting, or they might have just like had a class together and we're talking about it. Was it was just like two gays, like <laughs> yeah. talking about how cute he was. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> like a gay man talking to his butch lesbian friend. <laughs> like, like, do you think <laughs> which one? Do you of think us he's cute? Think? It's like, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh wait, is that wait, is he a guy or a girl? Like, yeah. Is, is that is a cute for twink or, or like a hot me? girl? Yeah. <laughs> Which one of us is gonna make out with them and find out? <laughs> <laughs> like who's gonna get our Twitter fame from this? <laughs> When Elliot moved to Isla Vista, one of his first roommates was a black kid named Chance. On one of their first nights That's living an together, adorable name. Chance is such a good name. <laughs> I'm like obsessed. It's so cute. Chance. Oh, it's um, it's that dog from Homeward Bound. The best, and the, the best dog, the, the best, best character dog other than yeah. Sassy. Yeah. <laughs> and the kid always was like Chance, <laughs> like Chance. where's Chance? <laughs> I bet this chance was cool. Yeah. On one of their first nights living together, they got into a conversation about girls, and Chance mentioned losing his virginity to a blonde girl when he was 13. Elliot was enraged at this. Quote, I was so enraged that I almost splashed him with my orange juice. I indignantly (laughs) told him that I did not believe him, and then I went to my room to cry. I cried and cried and cried. (laughs) And then I called my mother, and I cried to her on the phone. That conversation must have been bonkers. (laughs) Chance must have been so fucking confused. (laughs) Okay, this this gets bad. How could an inferior, ugly black mm. boy be able to mm. get a white girl and not me? I am beautiful and I am half white myself. I am descended from British aristocracy. He is descended from slaves. I deserve it more. I tried not to believe his foul words, but they were already said. And it was hard to erase from my mind. If this is actually true, if this ugly black filth was able to have sex with a blonde white girl at the age of 13, while I've had to suffer virginity all my life, then this just proves how ridiculous the female gender is. They would give themselves to this filthy scum, but they reject me, the injustice. It is so bonkers how he's saying they for a single mm-hmm. a single a girl. single white woman years earlier wasn't he 13 yeah so, so it was it, a girl. at the time like, white girl a single yeah. white girl who who now at this point would be like a young woman who yeah. like chance didn't say my girlfriend like yeah <laughs> it's this is fucking he, you know what chance probably did like spoke to her and was like nice to her yeah. was like friends with and, her yeah, and she felt safe and comfortable around him. Yeah. <laughs> like, like <laughs> this is, it's, uh, like, obviously, the unhinged, like, unfettered racism is super gross. But yeah, the, that that's just, like, the one thing that I kept coming back to is, like, women this and women that and the female gender this. And I'm like, that was one person. Mm-hmm. Like, the extrapolation of all women are disgusting – because one did one that I did something that I think is disgusting. And it's like, yeah. you, <laughs> you are, if all women are the same, then there's no hope for you. Like you don't. And that's what he wants to believe. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like so obvious that that's what he's doing. It's like, and not even like I'm more beautiful than him. So I've got to be able to get with someone it's like the exact opposite. It's like I'm more beautiful than him and now I'll never have anyone. And it's like that doesn't make any sense though. It doesn't scan. Like, yeah. That <laughs> that logic is not logicking. <laughs> like he's pure Delulu at this point. Pure like, Delulu. And you're right that like this is like this particular brand like he was always Delulu, but like this particular brand of Delulu is like internet poisoning. Yeah, right? it's not even internal logic. Like 
Yeah. Like within his own ideology. It just makes no sense whatsoever. It's like women only go after hot guys and I'm super hot, which is why I'll never get a girl. Mom! <laughs> Mom! Chance fucked a blonde girl! His poor like, mother. <laughs> I would have hung up on him. I would have been like, I'm going to go live in a f- different apartment much farther away from you. <laughs> Elliot expressed a similar reaction to seeing a Hispanic guy eating with a blonde woman at a table in a restaurant one day while he was out with Peter Roger. Again, doesn't know that this couple is even a couple. Like, no. they're, they, they're just eating together. He's so sad and alone. Quote, like, how could an inferior Mexican guy be able to date a white blonde girl while I was still suffering as a lonely virgin? I was ashamed to be in such an inferior position in front of my father. When I saw the two of them kissing, okay, so maybe he did know that there are a couple. When I saw the <laughs> two of them kissing, I could barely contain my rage. I stood up in anger and I was about to walk up to them and pour my glass of soda all over their heads. I probably would have if my father wasn't there. So you may have noticed that both of this those stories included details of like splashing <laughs> drinks in people's faces, which is also very dramatic and iconic. And like, that should have been born gay. Should have been born gay. No, he was born for the theater. Uh, yes. <laughs> born for the stage. <laughs> like, <laughs> the way like drama queen. that this, this, this little homo would have been able. Like, if he had been a homo, like, he would have cleaned the fuck up. He would have been on Glee. Like, yeah. <laughs> so he'd he probably be still be star. dead. But, yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> but if, like, a heroin overdose or something. Yeah. Yeah. Something, <laughs> something fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not something like someone who lived in an apartment would die from. <laughs> I'm never letting Spring that killing. go. <laughs> Only so, people in a, only people who live in apartments die from crime. <laughs> like, <laughs> so Elliot seemed to have a bit of a fixation with dumping drinks on people. And in his memoir Festo, as his behavior is escalating, he actually acts out on those fantasies a few times. He recounts stories of throwing hot coffee and iced tea at couples and girls who walked by and didn't notice him. So he'd be sitting outside the Domino's. Like, <laughs> He's like, that is so unhinged. Yeah. Like, Just, like the hot coffee is so bonkers. Yeah, hot coffee is uncalled for. I That's see like the little extra funny. assault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like- <laughs> hot coffee's <laughs> fucked up. Iced tea's a little funny. Oh, so this little this little queer sitting outside Domino's sipping on his iced tea. Like, if those two people don't stop and talk to me, I'm going to throw some iced tea at them. I'm gonna and I my need brisk. this for myself. Today's a real scorcher. In one anecdote. Okay, this one is, this one's fucking hilarious. In one anecdote, he even drives to the store and buys a super soaker and fills it with orange juice and then sprays people in the park, which is fucking hilarious. Like where from a tree? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Wasn't he scared of getting his ass handed to him? He was a white belt. What if that little brown belt 12-year-old came by? The 12-year-old wasn't there to protect those kids in the park. (laughs) But well, like, honestly, like, what if he had just become, like, an OJ spree shooter? Like, if instead of going and getting actual bullets, if he had just become, like, a menace to society, running around Santa Barbara, spraying people with orange juice, then he would like, also be famous. He would be viral. He'd be the OJ shooter. <laughs> <laughs> OJ Simpson tweeting, like, thank God for OJ. <laughs> <laughs> a little deep cut there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, I would be really annoyed if someone got me sticky with orange juice while I was trying to walk in a park. But it is very funny of an image. But less annoyed than getting sprayed with bullets. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I might, well, enough bullets and I don't think I'm feeling annoyance. <laughs> I think. But, like, the, I, the, like, the, the, Concocting this idea, then deciding, yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> and then going at to all the steps 
thereafter. Getting a, <laughs> getting a super soaker, getting orange juice, realizing you need a funnel, like <laughs> filling it up, going to the park. <laughs> he must have been quaking in his fucking boots. He was ready to pee himself every time he sh- he super well, soaked someone, pee, and then he probably he ran so hard. Oh my god! His- you know he ran so hard. <laughs> You know, he was so scared the second he did it. Yeah. Like, in the story, he like sees them playing in the park, like these sexy teens playing in the park. I think they were like playing frisbee or something. And he, it makes him so mad. He drives his ass all the way to the Target, buys the super soaker, fills it oh, with the He comes orange back juice, for them and comes back for them. What if, what if he showed up and they weren't there? Would he just spray some random person? Okay. <laughs> the idea that. He's so Delulu. Just He's ask the to most play. Delulu. Just ask to play. <laughs> you silly free. Why is your first thought revenge? It's just like several <laughs> people just they have existing fun? in public. It's like, that looks fun. I wish I could play it, but I never can. <laughs> and now neither can they. It's like none of this needed to happen. <laughs> oh my God. Also, if any of those sexy, sexy teens were, like, already flirting with each other, you spraying their shirts with orange juice, you, like, soaking them with orange juice. <laughs> he must juice, have been so mad <laughs> after they all took off their clothes and started, like, playing Making sexy out. frisbee <laughs> and, like, rolling around in the grass together. It's a real bonding moment for all of them. <laughs> oh, no, my shirt. <laughs> oh, no, my abs are all sticky. <laughs> It got into my beautiful blonde hair. Somebody help me rinse it out. <laughs> Sandy, help me get this out of my hair. And he's just like in a bush somewhere crying like, oh my God, I can't believe Calling I did mom. that. I'm s- mom, you need to help me. I've been really brave. He also describes this encounter around the same time. Quote, a group of four young thugs drove by me in a pickup mm. truck and proceeded to throw eggs at me. In my notes, I wrote, thug, thug life. <laughs> what the fuck? Just couple throwing of eggs thugs. at people. <laughs> couple of thugs throwing eggs. Uh, TP classic. in the local principal's house. <laughs> classic gang and activity <laughs> is throwing egging eggs. some nerd. You know what? It was probably the people from the park who were like, there's totally. that loser. They were like, this is war. <laughs> They're like just having fun with him, yeah. like interacting with him in the way that he interacts with people. And he was like, this was an assassination attempt. <laughs> a group of four young thugs drove by me in a pickup truck and proceeded to throw eggs at me, laughing while they did it. They seemed intoxicated <laughs> and they missed me. I picked up one of the shells and threw it right back into their car. I was no, no longer a weak little kid who would take a hit without fighting back. <laughs> I was stronger now. They got out of their car and tried to attack me, and they would have beaten me bloody if I didn't pull out my trusty pocket knife, which I usually carried when I walked alone by myself. Thankfully, the thugs backed away and drove off. Perhaps it was the knife or the look of extreme hatred in my eyes. I quickly ran home, terrified. It was an unsuccessful and misfortunate night. I was walking by myself alone. <laughs> <laughs> I usually bring my knife when I walk by myself alone. <laughs> like, yeah, you're you're very alone. That you need you are alone enough that I'm okay with you saying it twice and still saying like <laughs> that's proper English. Um, <laughs> also, reacting to a of- vicious <laughs> egg attack by pulling out a knife. <laughs> <laughs> a pocket knife. Those are like this big. <laughs> also, I love the lie that he whipped an eggshell <laughs> back into their back car. into the window of a car. An eggshell. Yeah. Those are they don't weigh anything. Like it would not just like soar <laughs> through go. the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a loser. He's like, yeah, I scared them off. And then I ran home. And I'm like, so who was scared? They were probably Sweetie. like, I'm not going to get stabbed by this Delulu twink. Like, yeah. let's just go. This is not worth it. That was hilarious. But now I think we're going to take a little take a little break, freshen up our drinks, maybe. Mm. And we'll be back in a minute.
All right. So Elliot Roger starts having this idea, this intrusive thought mm. about maybe actually doing something violent. Okay. Quote, I named it the Day of Retribution. It would be a day in which I exact my ultimate retribution and revenge on all of the hedonistic scum who enjoyed lives of pleasure that they don't deserve. If I can't have it, I will destroy it. I will destroy all women because I can never have them. I will make them all suffer for rejecting me. I will arm myself with deadly weapons and wage a war against all women and the men they are attracted to. And I will slaughter them like the animals they are. If they won't accept me among them, then they are my enemies. They show me no mercy, and in turn, I will show them no mercy. The prospect will be so sweet, and justice will be ultimately served. So hard, hard right to the right. Yeah. Of wheels squealing. Yeah, okay. It went from the, funny OJ and su- Super Soakers to yeah. the Day of Retribution. It's... To genociding all women. All, like, I can't have all of them, so all of them must die. It's like nobody can have all of them, of anyone. Like, it's not like... First of all, you don't have enough time in your day. I was about to say. like just Even if they all wanted like, you. Yeah, like, even if you were, like, a Virgo... Like you there's would not be able so, to fit all this in. There's only so much Elliot to go around. Yeah, exactly. Like the there's something about naming a day that right. hasn't happened yet. <laughs> like it's one thing to be like, oh, that was D Day, and like it, you, they yeah. weren't, but they weren't like, oh, like their calendars didn't say D Day, like right. before. <laughs> like naming, like naming it the Day of Retribution. Is that what it was? Yeah. Um, is is so LARPy. Right. Like, it's very clear that attention is what he wants. And uh, right now it is being just the main a character. dream. Yeah. yeah. Like right now it is just like his like it's, it's a power fantasy. Yeah. And he's like not entirely convinced of it. He's like right now yeah. it is like an intrusive thought that has become like a wouldn't it be kind of fun if like I killed all women? It's, I mean, it's not a realistic thought. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's not a smart goal. It's not specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, or time sensitive. So he's not, (laughs) it's, he's like, he's really not, he's really not doing it well. Like this is, yeah, this is embarrassing levels of, of like posturing. Right. I mean, obviously he did act out on these, on these fantasies, but like, the the written version is so childlike. Like right. it's it's um it, it reads like a like a villain in a children's show. Yeah. Like it's, it's so cartoonish. While petting yeah. a cat. <laughs> yeah. It's like if I can't have them, then I'll kill all the care bears. Right. And he's not <laughs> like, like he's not so Delulu that he thinks he's gonna kill all women. No, you know? yeah. But, like exactly. right now he is like He's he's talking about like this like intrusive thought that he keeps having where it's like, well, what if I did something really violent and like what if I gave it a cool name? Yeah. But he's not entirely convinced that he had to do something like just yet. He convinced himself that he had one last hope to get a girl to have sex with him. <sighs> becoming a multimillionaire. <laughs> okay. I mean, I like, that's a plan. Feasible. Yeah. <laughs> this 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 plan is feasible. I also love the idea of like I am only going to do one more thing and it's going to be it's it's got to work. If not, it's killing. <laughs> <laughs> and and it is a plan that's completely unnecessary in the exact opposite direction of where he needs to be going because he's Baby not is manic. Want. <laughs> yeah, like like <laughs> <laughs> In order to get, in order to fuck, I need to be a multi-millionaire. It's like, no, you need to fuck. Like, yeah, go join in with the hedonists who you think are like disgusting slobs. Go get shit faced at a party. Find some like cute young guy who wants to have sex with you and like do it. See, this is my problem. Bottom. I can't empathize with incels because they're mm-hmm. wrong. They're just not willing to put in the work to choose to be gay like I did. Like, yeah. 
It is a lifestyle <laughs> choice and and the correct one. The only correct one, clearly, <laughs> because look how it's working out for young straight men. God gave you a prostate for a reason. Yeah. What you think for- God wants us to you think God wants men and women to have sex so that we can procreate? We can procreate with a fucking turkey baster. Yeah. Like which God also invented. So Yeah. What was his real plan there? It's <laughs> uh, artificially <I> inseminating <laughs> your besties. <laughs> like it's just it's very disappointing seeing someone be like, okay, this is what I want. And it's right here. And I'm going to do it in the most and, convoluted way possible. And the only way to get it is <laughs> I'm gonna to just like head straight out that door. <laughs> like, <laughs> all you have to do is go be nice to someone. That's it. He doesn't believe that. He doesn't like well, he. His opinion of women. Stupid. His opinion of women has <laughs> been so was, devalued. Like... His opinion of women has been so like right. It, it's so low that he's like the only way these animals will ever pay attention <laughs> to me. Is is if I become a multimillionaire. Me, somebody who's already very wealthy and sits outside yeah. of Domino's wearing Gucci suits. <laughs> it's like the suits didn't work. I need to up this game. I need to go sit out outside Domino's wearing one million dollar or multi two million dollars <laughs> glued to my fucking shirt. Like I don't <sighs> Okay. He's gonna buy the Domino's and then sit outside of it. That's mine. <laughs> Be like, this is my Domino's. That's my store. <laughs> you want to know how many millions I have? Two. Well, that's multi. <laughs> that's more than that's one. That's my dom. Enjoy Domino's. It's mine, you degenerate sluts. <laughs> like super soaker. Like, <laughs> why won't they talk to me? I fucking hate you. <laughs> like, I can't. Okay, whatever. Let's... Let's keep going. I know it's going to get worse. I'm just stalling because I'm having fun in the not <laughs> horrible part of the episode. It's fun when he's funny. Like, it's fun when he's being cringe. Yeah. His parents were well off and bought him expensive gifts, including his black BMW, but they were not millionaires. Mommy just gave him a black BMW because he was like, I have to go to college and something and it's not going to be a Toyota. <laughs> Mummy, the blonde girls are not going to want to fuck me if my car doesn't make me f- look like a loser. <laughs> like Nobody looks at like a BMW driven by like a college student and it's like, wow, he must have worked really hard for this and be like, <laughs> yeah, and be like so dedicated and passionate and like has achieved so much. It's like, did your daddy buy you that car? <laughs> yeah, I've never looked at a BMW and been like, I want to fuck in that. Never. A Ford Taurus, on the other hand. Yeah, especially the 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 station wagon versions. <laughs> like if it looks like it's from like 2004 and about to break down, I'm like, yeah. yeah. There's something You know it's good if there's that. rust on the outside around the wheel. Yeah. The, the seats are the, like the coming apart cavities. at the seams. Yeah. The wheel. Yeah. It's the, it's the same way you know the dick's going to be good when you like go to somebody's house and they have like a flag tacked over their window and a mattress on the floor. <laughs> yeah. You're like, "Oh, I'm not going to be proud of this, but I am going to have a great time." <laughs> Elliot's mom, Lee Chin, dated some millionaires for a while, and Elliot urged her to marry one of them so that he could inherit his money and property. But Lee Chin (laughs) repeatedly told him that one marriage was more than enough. I do love that he was like, my plan is to become a multimillionaire. Mommy. Mom. Mom. Mommy. Mommy, I I know that you're a filthy little whore because you're a woman, so could you do this like... Could you be a filthy little whore for me? Yeah. Like, do you even love me? (laughs) (laughs) And she's still, like, dating millionaires. Like, they were, like, in his life. But she was like, I've been married once. I got divorced. (sighs) Like, a guy can be your stepdad without actually, like, doing the paperwork, you know? It really boggles my mind that he has never considered just going to places where the particular... Like just be type in like where do models hang out? You he will wants get answers. Tall blonde women just go to grad school in Sweden. Oh, honestly, he would have been so like he would have been such a like a cute little like a little little American tiny American twink. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They would have been like, oh my god, he's so charming. Like, yeah, this he just fucking didn't think. idiot. He just didn't think. Well, this is it. Like he needed he needed some like 
gay friends Act- to be like, yeah. you know what you should do? <laughs> you know what you should do? Bring us to Sweden. I will yeah. I would I would totally have been a wing them for this little loser. As and it would have like worked sitting- too. I would have been like, he's shy and weird, and he's probably gonna call you names, but <laughs> he has a heart, maybe not of gold, of coal. but <laughs> He has he has a heart. It's there. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> not the like a metaphorical one. Like I'm not saying he has like emotions that are like really <laughs> endearing or anything, but just like he's alive. Yeah. There's there's a <laughs> there's like a pouch of blood in his chest. <laughs> I assume that all his parts work. <laughs> in reality, he would have been sitting in the hotel next next door to you, like listening to you, like blowing some Swedish guy's back out yeah. and like seething <laughs> he can come like this is <laughs> it just this is i think i finally understand how like bisexual people feel when i talk <laughs> of like <laughs> just like if you're so lonely meeting like guys in in ottawa just like go meet some girls like there's yeah. plenty of them out there and i'm like but i don't want girls <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, that's what I do, and it works for me. So, Elliot's father, Peter Rogers, was successful, but he lost a huge chunk of his own money after a film he produced failed at the box office. So, like, he was like starting <laughs> nobody, to get into the low millions, and nobody went to see his film. And nobody he like, wanted mm. to go see his little art film, My Twisted Son's Life. <laughs> My twisted son's twisted life. (laughs) My twisted son's hunger games. (laughs) Elliot's parents had lots of Hollywood connections, but most entry-level and even long-term careers in Hollywood are low-paid. His mom at one point even suggested that he try and become a writer, which seemed appealing to him until he researched the odds of getting a screenplay picked up and how little writers make in Hollywood. <laughs> so like it, like his mom wasn't like, become a writer because you'll become rich. She was like, you seem to spend a lot of time alone in your room writing. Like, why don't yeah. you, I can introduce you to some like Hollywood people and like maybe you can start writing some screenplays and like shopping that them around like people. Work. And he was like, it's work and it won't get me rich. It will only like, get can't me. Can't you just you know, marry someone? Yeah, can't you like, just marry someone? That sounds easier someone? for all of us. <laughs> it sounds easier for me. <laughs> and I guess he is a writer. Yeah, he wrote a whole <laughs> memoir festo, <laughs> and I'm gonna get a Pulit- I'm gonna get a Pulitzer over it <laughs> for reading it out, <laughs> <laughs> for reading it, and for coining that term. Yeah, for making a cute little term for this murderous <laughs> scroll <laughs> memoir festo. It's cute. He had very few real interests outside of a little game called World of Warcraft. <gasps> yes, His we're so game. alike. <laughs> we're both gay. We're both skinny. <laughs> we both love both World pretty. of Warcraft. <laughs> we both sit outside dominoes hoping people will talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i feel like i'm i feel i feel like this is like fucking misconnections <laughs> like, i i, I could have fixed him <laughs> you could have fixed him like bro calm down women aren't like weird like that it's you who's weird and boom fixed yeah he just needs he needs the thing that gender critical people do to their children he needs to be cut off from the conversion internet. therapy <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but to being gay. <laughs> but to being gay. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to be cut off from the internet. He needs to be disconnected from anyone that's talking to him about incel shit. He needs to be like detoxed, go to therapy, but not a therapist who affirms his delusions. <laughs> that he's like a he's an ugly person and women are garbage. Like <laughs> So he had very few interests outside of World of Warcraft. Yes, his do you know what he played? Video game. No, I don't know World of Warcraft. <laughs> okay. Um, like, I just wanted to know what his character build was, but okay. It was his favorite game. You could probably find that out. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a <laughs> forum somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> For a bunch of freaks are like no. I'm sure no. Rational Wiki has got everything. 
like in detail. His favorite game that he had developed a little bit of an addiction to in his teens. And he really only seemed to view things like careers and hobbies and skills as a means to an end. So doing something like writing as a creative outlet never really occurred to him. It was just a matter of like, will this or won't this get me laid? He decided that if he was going to get rich and get girls... He would need to win the lottery. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's somehow better odds than getting a, a screenplay reasonable... published? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, I looked up the stats on screenplays. Not going to work. It's really but... hard. <laughs> the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> Have you considered that your odds on publishing a screenplay are maybe a little bit weighted because of your parents who are yeah. like. Who, like, who fucked George Lucas? <laughs> <laughs> like, George, if you don't help me find somebody who. He's going to shoot this, up a school. <laughs> he's going to kill some people. I'm scared of him. <laughs> George, George, please. George, please, George. I've never asked you, George, I've never asked you for anything. <laughs> <laughs> No, but literally, like, after <laughs> after all of his crimes, like, the media reached out to Steven Spielberg and were like, what do you think about this? And he was like, no comment. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> Why would you ask that? <laughs> that's, that's weird. That's fucked up. That's weird that's behavior. What outlets the, did that? I want to talk to them. Weird. The media <laughs> is weird. The media is weird. So Elliot played the Mega Millions, which had Your gotten up to really two hundred right million. Thank you. I just, I just needed to bring it up. Am I looking cut? Yeah. Am I looking like Elliot Roger would kill for me if I was blonde? Should uh, I go blonde? I don't know. Kill four <laughs> or kill me? <laughs> I feel like four, maybe not. <laughs> no, you should not go blonde. It's a mistake. Okay. It's always a mistake. Your roots will be in in a week. And that middle part will not be looking it's cute. It's true. And I will have root glow. <laughs> yeah. I think it's cute if you have like dark roots because like I kind of like like a little bit of – I kind of like a little bit of balayage. Yeah. But I would have root glow because I've got yeah. strawberry blonde hair. Yeah. I do dye my hair. I dye my hair darker. But it is it is red underneath. So he played the Mega Millions, which had gotten up to $200 million. He spent $100 on tickets and no one won. When the jackpot reached $290 million, he spent another $400. And again, <laughs> no one won. There's so many tickets. Again, no one won. Oh, my God. The poor fuck at whatever gas station he pulled into in his BMW <laughs> and was like, I need $400 worth of tickets. I need tickets. your whole roll of tickets. <laughs> When the jackpot reached $363 million, he spent another $500 on tickets. Jesus Christ. So we're at like $1,000 on tickets so far. Finally, the jackpot reached $663 million, and he dropped another $700 on that Oh, jackpot. he's got to so win now. This is more than my rent. Does he, does he understand how many tickets? He would need They're to buy <laughs> for the odds to like. I'm gonna like, assume <laughs> more than <laughs> more than more than like a sixty three million, more than six hundred sixty three million. Yeah, because like, that's the how the fuck? lottery works. <laughs> <laughs> He's so dumb. That's how the lottery funds itself. <laughs> He's like, oh my god, it's worth even more. So, like, <laughs> this is this I is should perfect spend for even me. more. Yeah. It's like, no, babe, everyone else is doing that too, though. It's six hundred sixty three million. Aren't so I'm gonna spend seven hundred dollars. <laughs> this has got it. Like this has got it. Why is no, why has nobody ever thought about this before? <laughs> why has nobody ever thought of just spending a lot of money on the lottery and then winning it? <laughs> Believing he would win this time, he repeated mm -hmm. a mantra to himself. Do you want to know what the mantra was? Do you want to guess what the mantra was? I will be a multimillionaire. That's a normal mantra. His right. mantra. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I deserve to win. No. Again, way more normal. <laughs> okay. I think my, my, my skew on like, more, what's fucked up rational. is like maybe a little more different <laughs> than his you... was. <laughs> Mine, like, it's so Delulu to think you deserve to win the lottery. And he's Delulu, but this has got to be worse. Okay. Tell me. So his mantra 
that he said to himself, knowing that he would win the lottery, was, I am the image of beauty ad supremacy. <laughs> Look at your face. I am the image of beauty ad pr- supremacy. Ad supremacy? Ad, like advertisement. I am the image beauty. of beauty ad supremacy. I am the image <laughs> of beauty ad supremacy. Just saying that to yourself in the mirror over and over again until you win the lottery. Like beauty what in the American ad psycho? Supremacy. He, I am the image of beauty ad supremacy. I am the image of beauty ad supremacy. It like really bothers me how supremacy. clumsy the wording is. Like yeah. even calling something a beauty ad. Like, that's not a term. That's not a term. <laughs> and also, supremacy doesn't work there either. Beauty like, ad supremacy. <laughs> like, I am the su- most supreme ruler of beauty ads. Like, that's just like... Oh. Yeah. Baby girl's brain is just, like, rotting and dripping out of her ears. I, it really bothers me how stupid he is. Like, just Google. Like, what are what are the... What do they call the ads what in magazines mantras? where everyone's hot? <laughs> yeah, like self love mantras. Like, <laughs> yeah, even just being like you're hot, you're hotter than everybody else. Yeah, you're hot. Like, you deserve good things. Yeah, women will love you. you. Yeah, you're gonna be so fucking rich and so fucking hot. You're gonna have to you beat have them off with a stick. Sucking lips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like men are gonna want to leave their wives for you. Women are gonna want to leave their wives for you. Like, <laughs> but no, you were you were the something of beauty ad supremacy. And then, do you know what happened then, Kaylin? He won the lottery. He lost. Okay, I was really wondering because I was like, <laughs> it'd be really funny if if he did win, you would have played it the same way. <laughs> So I was like, there now I'm like, well, he did buy a lot of tickets. Can you imagine if he won the lot? I mean, this would have happened if he won the lottery and then still went and did like a, sh- yeah. a shooting. Like- because even being a multimillionaire and like, let's talk, babes, that's not a lot of money anymore for a gold digger, like, which is what he's looking for. Oh, he's a like, yeah, he's a. He's looking for a gold digger. He's a gold digger chaser. I mean, yeah, <laughs> like, he's a gold digger chaser. It's a vicious chaser. cycle. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cat and mouse, except An for if, <laughs> if the mouse also sometimes ate the cat. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just bonkers to me that he'd be like one in one and a half to two million dollars. Well, how much was the jackpot? It was like. Oh, it was six hundred sixty-three million dollars. Yeah, like, that's enough. It was a enough. pretty significant jackpot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you do have to pay taxes, right? And the taxes so on he's... lottery winnings are significant. Yeah, but it's it's better than like apartment money. Like this yeah. is like this is <laughs> someone with a house bedroom money. House money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like the kind of the kind of woman that he would be looking for, he'd need to win a few lotteries. Yeah. Yeah. But he's gonna he can put all that money right back in the lottery. You can buy another three hundred and sixty million tickets, babe. You can't, you shouldn't have spent those three hundred dollars on lip fillers. I needed that for more lottery tickets. If I could do it once, I did occur. it again. Conversations that occur in a very healthy relationship. Oh my god. Okay. Quote. That night, I threw a wild tantrum, screaming and crying for (laughs) hours on end. I had the whole apartment to myself, so there was no one there to hear me. (gasps) I raged at the entire world, thrashing at my bed with my wooden practice sword and slashing at the air with my pocket knife. I even downed an entire bottle of wine and got so drunk that I spilled my wine all over my laptop, permanently destroying it. I soaked my pillow with tears as I drifted off to sleep in my lonely bed over over losing the lottery. <laughs> that was his I wooden need, practice sword. He I, has a yeah, wooden sorry. practice sword. We need to go back to the top. Okay. Um, Do you want me to go line you, by line for you? Yes. The way you breezed past that when you knew damn well I needed a like genius lyrics level deep dive okay. into each of each of these lines. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to read you that. I'm going to go line by line. 
Okay. With I'll fucking tell you to, Scarlett O'Hara there here. Okay. Like, well, this this is the problem. This needs to be read out by someone who's classically trained because he is an ingenue. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you you almost hear it in that like transatlantic accent yes, yes, from like yes. the mid twentieth century. Uh, not almost. Like, like this is fucking Catherine Hepburn. I am living. <laughs> this fucking <laughs> dramatic queen. You know there's Standing no God because o. he wasn't born gay. <laughs> Standing O for Elliot R. Right now. <laughs> that night, I threw a wild tantrum, screaming and crying for hours on end. I had the whole apartment to myself. Hold on. Nobody should be throwing it when they know it's a tantrum. Once you realize it's a tantrum... Like, that's have when you know no you shame. have to stop. Yeah. Have <laughs> like, you no shame? It's like, I'm a little baby and I'm so mad. Yeah. Like, when you chill- recognize that it's a tantrum <laughs> is when you need to be like, okay, I need to go do something else. You stomping your little boots. You're going to rip them off angrily, just opening the Velcro and pulling your tiny little feet out. <laughs> Not this 22-year-old man not knowing how to tie his own shoes. <laughs> I was just so pissed off every time I try. <laughs> I had the whole apartment to myself. <laughs> so there was no one there to hear me. I raged at the entire world, thrashing at my bed with a wooden practice sword. Okay, hold on. With, with a wooden practice sword. <laughs> I love the idea of raging at the entire world. Alone in your apartment. Alone in your apartment. (laughs) Like such an impotent rage. This is the thing. These these men's like it's it's so impotent until it's not. Yeah. Until it's like they're yeah. Like it's 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 always so impotent with incels. Like like yes, they're I would say it started or it stopped being impotent rage when he started like throwing like drinks and stuff on people. But like then it was potent rage. Yeah. <laughs> but like it, a lot of the anger is in not being able to affect change. Like right. no matter what I do, it's always going to be like this. And because the problem is everyone else, there's nothing I could even do. Right. <laughs> to like it's fix it. It's a self-fulfilling it. prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's very funny when it's an impotent rage. And then it's like very much not yeah. <laughs> the second it stops being that way. So right. I'm still here for this angry little outburst, this little tantrum <laughs> that he's having in his house with his little Peter Pan wooden sword. <laughs> it's such a funny detail. He dunks on himself so hard and he doesn't even realize that he's doing it. Like, Imagine I putting that in your manifesto. And yeah. You don't, babe. You don't have to tell people about the wooden sword. No. The problem is Keep that, to yourself. Is that he still it. thinks that was cool. Yeah. That's why he put it in. Because as like an unreliable narrator, we understand that he's putting in the things that he wants people to know. He's like right. trying to paint a picture, but this is a picture he's trying to paint. No. And it's like, like juxtaposed next to like the Gucci and the Prada and your practice sword, and your little pocket knife, your little. I practice your li- the blade. Your, your, your little grower. <laughs> oh. She's not a shower, no. and she's not that much of a grower, but. That could have been fine. No, well, no, like just the pocket knife. I, I don't. I don't, I don't mind a little dick. So he gets he gets super drunk, right? And mm-hmm. he accidentally spills his wine all over his laptop and oh, destroys he lied. it. I caught him in a lie. <gasps> he said he drank all the wine. Then what spilled on your laptop? Hmm. Yeah, he had like a glass. <laughs> like I'm telling you right now. Oh, boy. I mean, he was 124 <laughs> pounds at five foot nine. Of course, he had a glass. He had a glass, and he was fucking hungover for days. I downed a bottle of wine, and it's like was I downed a bottle onto my laptop? <laughs> oh, fair. You know what? He's like technically <laughs> true. <laughs> so the next morning, oh. he wakes up, 
and yeah. realizes that he's destroyed his laptop and and he lost, calls the <laughs> lost the lottery and lost the lottery and he calls his mommy and he tells her it just stopped working <laughs> <laughs> Makes her agree to buy him a new one. Because I woke up this morning and my laptop just stopped working. It sucks. I have to do my homework on that. Wait, where is she? She's in Was Woodland he not Hills. living with her? No. Oh, so he's point, in his own apartment? His own apartment. Oh, with Chance. That his mommy and daddy pay for him. And Chance so, was out. That's why he was alone. Yes. So like okay. he when he's like... N- 19 to like 22 he's living in santa barbara he's living in isla vista um because his parents were like you should go to with a with a bunch of different roommates one of them was chance um and his parents were like you should go to college you'll meet people there and like yeah if you want to meet friends yeah they paid for the apartment and then the roommates like pay their share of the rent um his parents paid for the bmw like so like He's living alone, but like on mommy and daddy's dime. Yeah. Okay. Which is fine when you're when you're 19, 22 and going to college. Yeah. I think your parents should pay for everything for you forever. And all the money that you make should uh go Just to stuff yours. that you like. Just yeah. walking around money, you know? Yeah. Just just Instagram ad money. <laughs> Gucci, wooden practice swords, lip yeah. filler. All that <laughs> wooden Gucci practice swords. <laughs> yeah, the, the little Gucci symbol on the hilt. <laughs> oh my God, that'd be so cute. Oh, I wonder if he got like a cute little like vinyl skin wrap for his pocket knife with the like Louis Vuitton symbols. He would. That's the kind of tacky. I mean, that's that's the kind of tacky I could like get back on board with again. Like, well, I would. Louis yeah. Vuitton purses, I think, are like gross. But like, if you yeah. do like a a Louis Vuitton like laptop case, I'm like, okay, now it's so tacky that I think it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It can circle back around, but you have yeah. to be doing it like a little ironic. Like a you have to be self aware. Yeah. Which Elliot Roger is not. <laughs> Out of all the things that I would call him, like bro, bro is like deep into Delulu now. Like, yeah. like once you got the practice sword out, I have always said, <laughs> once you get the practice sword out, like it's done, it's over. It's like, too far. Yeah. Like you are right You're to done be black pilled. So. Yeah. yeah. Like that's it for you, baby. Unless again. If he was like a little twink doing like Peter Pan cosplay, then it'd see, be, that's adorable. It'd be a fun little bit. Yeah. He fun, would have cleaned like, up on Twitter with that practice sword. All the pretty slutty gays that I've known have gone as Peter Pan for Halloween at least once. Yeah. Like when you're the skinny. Sluttiest, it's the sluttiest yeah. little costume. The Mary that Martin little version. little green costume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little green tights. <laughs> Just a little pillowcase. J- tight little jagged ass. ends. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, so I need something that shows my bulge and my ass and my chest and lets me wear like a cute little hat. Is there any popular children's characters (laughs) that I can dress as? Ones that are always children. (laughs) It's like the archetypical like child forever. And it's like, no, that's good. I'm going to be a sexy that child for (laughs) Halloween. I'm going to be a sexy child. (laughs) (sighs) Do you sometimes think that we're doing Matt Walsh's work for him? <laughs> I mean, a lot of my tweets feel that way. <laughs> when I'm like, I just think cis people shouldn't be allowed to work in schools. Every single time I just say something <laughs> random like that, like tweeting, like stoned, drinking a glass of wine in the bathtub. Like, <laughs> it's <would be> hilarious <laughs> I, to say. I never know if it's the one that's going to be like read out by Tucker Carlson the next day on Fox <laughs> News. <laughs> And I always have that in the back of my of mind. <laughs> it's like Russian roulette, kind of, yeah. but with getting swatted. <laughs> Isn't that fun and exciting for everyone involved? <laughs> it's just we never know who's going down next. It's the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we could be any of us. Okay, so he's like, Mommy, I need you to buy me a new laptop. Yeah, which she ends up. Yeah, because she's his mommy. <laughs> <laughs> and he spilled wine on it. <laughs> he 
he ends up having to drive to a Best Buy in Oxnard to pick up his laptop because the one in Santa Barbara <laughs> didn't have the right model. And while waiting for his pickup order to be ready, he spots a shooting range next door. Quote, Going to the shooting range while I waited for my laptop gave me the perfect opportunity to gain some initial training in shooting guns, which will be the main weapons I use as vengeance against my enemies when the day of retribution ultimately comes to pass. I walked into the range, rented a handgun with the ugly old redneck cashier, and started to practice shooting at paper targets. As I fired my first few rounds, I felt so sick to the stomach. I questioned my whole life, and I looked at the gun in front of me and asked myself, what am I doing here? How could things have led to this? I couldn't believe my life was actually turning out this way. There I was, practicing shooting with real guns because I had a plan to carry out a massacre. Why did things have to be this way? I silently questioned myself as I looked at the handgun I was holding in front of me. I paid my fee and left the range within minutes, feeling as if I was going to be sick. Things don't have to be this way. That's, I just started like, like nose laughing when he said that. It's like, you're so Delulu. Like, Why do things just have like, to be this way? I feel sick. They don't. Me don't driving do it. in. <laughs> me, like, it's, it's bonkers how every single thing that's happened has been like a decision that he's made. And he's like, <laughs> I didn't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I like, think he did, sweetie. <laughs> Like literally every every single thing is his fault. Like they, but he never. I can understand he never being socially awkward. That. I understand being shy. Those are very difficult things to overcome. Yeah, more so if you have to deal with like being a, a neurodivergent. And you're trying to like interact with neurotypical people. Totally. There's like there's barriers, but like at no point does that make you go to a fucking gun range. <laughs> Like, just, like, standing there, like, shooting a target, being like, it didn't have to be this way. And it's like, it still doesn't. Nothing's happened yet. If he also didn't think he was, like, so much better than everybody all the time, like, he would have found other neurodivergent people to, like, be friends with. (sighs) Like the, but he, but he like was ashamed of everything about himself and also thought that he was better than everyone all the time. So he never sought help. Like. He never sought people out like him because he hated himself. Well, yeah. And also, the it's a weird incel thing for him to be like so blackpilled, but so conceited. Yeah. It's a weird dichotomy. Yeah. Because usually they're like, I'm an ugly piece of shit. And that's why I'll never be with anyone unless I can look smacks and become like super fucking hot. But he was like, I'm already hot. <laughs> like this. And he wasn't wrong. He was beautiful. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> he's a like, gorgeous no, man. No, he's, he's, he's not like, wrong. But like, it's, he's a cute I little wonder, twink. I wonder if he was on those incel forums being like, yeah, you're right. You're nasty. Like, I just need <laughs> I to win the lottery. <laughs> I, just, I just need to win the lottery. His whole like he, thing was like, I'm gorgeous. <laughs> Women are just too dumb to realize it. And it's like, well, then why don't you try fucking a man? He, they might appreciate the thing you. Is, the thing is, women, minus the misogyny, would have been absolutely down with him. It's just the problem was they're not going to pick up men outside the dominoes. And especially ones that look like they're on their way to like a a really, a really uncomfortable funeral. Like, (laughs) I got to bring dominoes to my, (laughs) to my boss's funeral. (laughs) We're all going out after. So I'm dressed up like this, but the top has to show respect. (laughs) It's like, But he still thought he had one last ditch attempt at winning the, his millions, the Powerball, which had not yet come to California. <laughs> the lottery again. <laughs> yeah, but it's the Powerball. So there's like state lotteries and then there's like the Powerball that like a bunch of different states participate in, but okay. California didn't yet. So he drove all night, like all the way through the night to Arizona to buy Powerball tickets. 
The sun rose as I crossed the long stretch of desert in between Palm Springs and the border of Arizona. It was one of the most beautiful things I had ever seen. When I saw the sun creeping up before me in the horizon, igniting the clouds with its orange glow, I proclaimed that sunrise as the sunrise of my destiny. I was riding towards my destiny to obtain the record-breaking Powerball ticket of $500 million. As I drove, I thought about every event in my life that led up to that journey. I considered that journey as the ultimate culmination of the tragic suffering and sexual starvation I had to go through for so long. That Powerball jackpot was meant for me. Once I won it, I'd be able to have my beautiful bolt. Ball- <laughs> Freudian slip from me. <laughs> My beautiful bald king. <laughs> Once I won it, I'd be able to have my beautiful blonde girlfriend. I'd be able to show the world that girls consider me worthy. I'd be able to show the world how superior I am. And of course, I would be able to live above everyone who has wronged me and rub it all in their faces as a form of gratifying vengeance. That was my ultimate purpose in life, my reason for living. It's very revealing. Him? Lana Del Rey monologuing down the fucking highway, (laughs) like to the sunset, being like, I'm finally going to get everything I've ever deserved, a beautiful blonde girlfriend, and everyone's going to remember they they were wrong about me. Like, this is... This is so beyond Delulu. This is like pure main character moment. Nobody is... Like, no, if he hadn't killed people, nobody would have ever thought of him again, other than like that weird guy who's hung out outside Domino's. The I'd be able to have my beautiful blonde girlfriend, I'd be able to show the world that girls consider me worthy is like one, it's one sentence. And like, it reveals so much. Like, you don't actually care about being loved at all. You care about showing like always it's status. Yeah. It's the same as having a Prada. I almost said handbag, but I know like homeboy probably isn't like rocking a like, but like this is an accessory. But he is. A blonde girlfriend is is an accessory. Yeah. Which like for some men, that is true. Like some men treat their trophy wives like that. There's like like, color lightning. Like would you settle for like a brunette girlfriend and then you just like offer to get her balayage often enough that like eventually she's blonde? Like he he's very like because he used set to dye his blonde. own hair oh, right. blonde. Yeah, he's very se- see. He's not even willing to put in the effort that this girl has to. Like, why doesn't he have to be blonde? Maybe she doesn't want some like nasty. What color is his hair? Brown. Yeah, the same as it's mine. Like black. Maybe she doesn't want nasty little brown hair on her short little king. Maybe she wants a blonde too to match, and that's why they've all been ignoring him. Like. <laughs> I think that like, was his problem. He didn't keep dyeing his hair blonde. Yeah. I mean, blonde is clearly the most beautiful according to him, but like he's not willing to do it. I don't yeah. I, I don't like anything about him, but I especially dislike how lazy he is. Like he f- is this so is fucking incels. entitled. Like he wants everything handed to him. He thinks he literally deserves to win the lottery because he hasn't had sex yet. Like that's so in there's yeah. no connection. There's no like I'm literally starving. I deserve to win the lottery. Maybe you should have spent some of that like thousand dollars you spent on lottery tickets on like, I don't know, a flashlight. Like it would have been better spent money. Or on like a girl. Like ask someone you think is cute out on a date, send her some flowers, take her to like a really nice restaurant. But you wouldn't do that with like a like a rabid dog, right? <laughs> like the way that like this is what I keep going to. I'm like, how do you like what? You, there's so many things you can do, and it's like, yeah, but you don't think about that if like women aren't people. I have to keep like reminding yeah. myself that like, oh right, I forgot women aren't people. He's like a single blonde girl once had sex with another boy who happened to be black, and therefore all of these women are animals. Every, all women, and they all need to die. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and again, like, he, so he paints like such a 
a vivid picture, right? Of like the sun coming up as he's, as he's like driving across the he's desert. So dramatic. He's so dramatic, and it's like, why didn't you just like listen to your mom and like write? Because you clearly enjoy doing that. Like, why don't yeah. you just like go become a writer instead of being like a weird freak insistent upon like winning the lottery? He could have wrote this. If he had written this as a book mm-hmm. without the murder and the the fantasies of murder, but just like his memoir of growing up feeling isolated and, and alone and alone yeah. and but also like being like kind of fucking pompous. Like, we would have ate that fucking book up. We would have been like, what a piece of shit, but what a queen. Like, (laughs) yeah, he like he could have made something of even this. Like, Like, literally, this is Lolita. This is Humber Like, this is Lolita. Like, this is and like, that's considered one of the greatest novels of the English language. Not saying that he's capable of that, but like, we love an antihero. We love... We love a pompous, especially anti-hero. a messy little bitch. Like but that would have required some level of self awareness, right? And effort. He doesn't yeah. want to put any he effort doesn't in. Put any effort in. The Other way to become a multimillionaire to isn't him. working. <laughs> he, he's willing to put in the effort to drive through the night to go buy some lottery yeah. tickets, but but not to sit down in, and write something. He will put in the effort in a in a short burst for a quick fix, right? And like that's not. <laughs> How anything works, or else everyone would. Other do than it. drug addiction, and like, mm. I wish he had done that. It honestly probably would have ended a lot better. Mm-hmm. It's like I was thinking of like going and killing like all women, but then I got like really high and started playing World of Warcraft, and like, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna stay in tonight. Yeah, he did have a World of Warcraft addiction, which he like cold mm-hmm. turkeyed himself off of, and I also think he shouldn't have done that. He should have just like. He should have just it was like probably the healthiest really thing in his life. <laughs> yeah. He should have just gotten high and kept playing World of Warcraft. Uh, yeah. He probably would have so met some have... like gamer girl through that. Yeah. Probably. Maybe not blonde, but one of them. One of them blue haired. But he really needed to <laughs> open up his. <laughs> he really needed to open up his. His like. Preferences. His... Well, somebody yeah. should have told him like, you know. Before they can go blue, they have to go up to blonde. Like that's part yeah. of the process. They so she's underneath blonde that under blue, there. there's blonde. <laughs> yeah. Just imagine that. Uh, <laughs> just think about that <laughs> while you're s- sorting at night or whatever he does. Sorry, practice sword for what? <laughs> what Fighting? What? I don't Did know. Did he move up from that? I don't think there's swords in I think- karate. That temper tantrum was the first time he ever mentioned the practice sword. <laughs> okay. Just practicing for when someone breaks into his apartment, I guess. Okay. So he drives through the night to Arizona to buy a lottery ticket for the Powerball. He didn't win. So let's take another let's take a little a little ad break. And then and then I'll tell you what happens after he didn't win the Powerball. Oh no. <laughs> what if we don't know <laughs> what if we just like said he wins the lottery <laughs> and we just end it there and everything's great and fine well then we, we still... wouldn't be doing our due diligence Ugh, as I... dumb bitches on spotify i hate my due dill <laughs> as dumb bitches we have to have some integrity that's what my uncle spider ben said to me shortly before he died with dumb bitch comes great responsibility. Yeah. So true. So, so true, true, Uncle, Uncle ben. Spider Ben. <laughs> Uncle Spider Ben. <laughs> Go into the light now. Shh. <laughs> Shh. We're done. Placing pennies on his eyes. <laughs> He's like, I'm still alive. <laughs> Shh. That's Shut just gas ben. escaping your body. <laughs> When Elliot gets back to Santa Barbara, he breaks down in his car and starts weeping. And then he makes maybe 
the very first good decision of his life and calls his parents and tells them that he is mentally unwell and that he's struggling to meet girls and that he needs to talk to someone. This is around autumn, winter of 2012. Okay. When he returns home for winter break from UC Santa Barbara, um, so he's been going to UC Santa Barbara this whole time, um, his parents arrange some interventions. He has a team of counselors, psychiatrists, psychologists, but he hates all of them. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> and refuses to take any of the medications he's prescribed. <laughs> he's like, I need help. And they're like, here's help. And he's like, not that kind of No, help. not like that. I need, I need you to buy me a woman. <laughs> yeah. Exactly the same way where he's like, I need to meet a woman. And people are like, hi, what's your name? And he's like, not like that. Get away from <laughs> not me. Not like that, you whore. <laughs> oh, Stay away from me, you brown haired bitch. <laughs> you nasty brown haired bitch. Come back to your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> So there's always a push to blame the parents of these young mass killers. And I always think that that's like maybe too easy of an answer. Yeah. Um, it does seem like Peter and Lee Chin really, really did try to help him when he when he asked for help. I mean, they tried to help him, period. Like they sent him to UC Santa Barbara as like their choice. Um, because they wanted mm -hmm. him to like get out into the world and get an education. You know, they paid for everything for him. And when he asked for help, they did everything in their power. They were um, trying to give him the best possible chance at life. Absolutely. When he was a child, they were constantly pulling him in and out of schools every time he claimed he was being bullied or having anxiety. They'd allegedly taken him to several counselors and therapists as a kid as well, trying to address how withdrawn and anxious he'd always been. And they were the ones who convinced him to start attending UC Santa Barbara to try to get him, get him out and about. His mom paid for his apartment and his car, and his dad paid for his tuition and gave him $500 a month towards his living expenses. So they really did. I mean, like paying full tuition, pay, your mom's paying for your car yeah. and your apartment, your dad is giving you 500 bucks a month to just like spend. Like they, they really, like they financially covered him and they also like, I feel like they they did their job as parents. Like they, they yeah. were really trying to look after his like mental well-being as well as his physical and financial well-being. After the attacks, Peter Roger would give lots and lots of interviews. And I don't want to read too much into that or try to diagnose anything. But on a personal level, I do find that detail and his demeanor a little off-putting. And I also find this part of his Barbara Walters interview really off-putting. You are a very good-looking man. Thank did you, he man. realize that? Did, did that please him? Was he... He was jealous of me, was... the way that I look. What the fuck? Yeah, so his dad... And I, I'll put this in the, in the episode. Yeah, you can put me dad... reacting yeah. <laughs> in real time in the corner. <laughs> The, the, what his the dad fuck? says he was jealous of me and the way that I looked. And his dad is like a handsome guy, but so is Elliot. No, and like, busted. what? where does that come from? Where does that? No, his like, dad was busted. Compared Elliot's, to Elliot, like Elliot was, th this man, okay, now I blame him. Like, that it is, is like a very shallow, weird thing to say. And like when you when your son is that like violently shallow, you're like, well, where did that come from? Okay, so I don't know. I'm not, again, you're right. Like, I'm not going to, like, diagnose anything here or, like, think that I know things that I don't. But Elliot's main emotion seems to be envy. It's always, like, they have something that I want. They have something that I deserve and that they don't. That's where all the rage comes from. All of his attacks have been people that get to do things that he feels like he doesn't, right? So I'm wondering if his dad's right. And he literally was jealous of him because he's jealous of fucking everyone. Everyone for every reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or if his father was is where is the kind from. of person to 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 identify jealousy in other people because he is a very jealous person himself. And right. Elliot grew up around that or a mixture of both or whatever. But like like I believe him when he says Elliot was jealous. Because but it it, just it's a weird to thing to say. It's a weird thing to oh, say on camera. You don't you don't say that. Keep it to the group chat. <laughs> like, like that's weird 
And to to drop so casually without like any like real explanation of it. I'll, also like I know that interviews are like edited and there could have yeah. been some context that wasn't included or something. But yeah, that's very strange behavior. I guess like it I feel like it only wouldn't be strange if Elliot Roger made that clear in his very long, very detailed manifesto. Yeah. But Elliot feels a lot of feelings about his father. And I I don't know that I read like jealousy or envy into it. I think he has a lot of respect for his father. He mm-hmm. loved his father. He looked up to his father. And I guess you could say like like looking up to someone is maybe like a kind of envy. But you I want to be I think like that's them. a very Yeah, I think that's a very pessimistic way of looking at it. And like Yeah. There when Elliot discusses his father, it's not with bitterness. Um, okay. He does and it's talk clear. about his father being handsome and successful, but not in like a, a not in the way that he talks yeah. about like other men who have sex that he's like jealous. Yeah, of. He he's very clear yeah. <laughs> when he's jealous of somebody. It's very. He talks apparent. about it in a way that is like respectful and is like th- this is a man who mm-hmm. has mm-hmm. Is, who is succeeding. Okay. Like, yeah, that's weird shit. So it's a weird way to interpret his words. I think. Yeah, and I I just had to like include that because it it really kind of like stopped me in my tracks while I was like researching this. Yeah, my like my jaw dropped. I'm pretty sure. It's a, I don't actually remember, but I feel say. like it did. <laughs> it <laughs> like, did. It's it's not what I was expecting to hear. Like <laughs> Elliot Roger also often described himself using lots of superlatives like gorgeous, fabulous, magnificent, <laughs> supreme, and coupled with his dad comments, like it just felt weird. Like that's bonkers i'm fabulous (laughs) supreme i'm the motherfucking supreme i'm magnificent (laughs) like what the fuck he he like at the same time he sounds gay and like he is talking about like a a lion pride that he stumbled upon Like, do you know what I mean? Like, they're just so beautiful, so magnificent. (laughs) Look at that mane. It's fabulous. (laughs) Like, this is bonkers. Okay. He's so, he's such a little dandy. He is. This is why I just keep reading his manifesto thinking he's gay. And every time he brings (laughs) up women, I'm like, what? What? Why are you mad at them? I have nothing to do with them. Yeah. Just stay away from them. <laughs> they don't bite. <laughs> They'll leave you alone. I guarantee you all those like all those like beautiful girls he sat outside of Domino's waiting for it were like, look at that little homo dressed up in Gucci. <laughs> right? Like he's so bad at this. It's really depressing how bad he is at this. Because like if he had made just like like, if he had someone in his life that was able to convince him to just make different choices, like, literally a gay friend, since literally. he was, like, too fucked up to talk to women, like, if there had been, like, a cis a cis man who wore, a cis gay man who, like, wore Prada, too, or something that he would listen to and lived in a house, like, I honestly think, like, a few key tips would have just, like, Like, no, 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 we'll go to the pub and, like, I'll talk to girls. And I'll be like, hey, like, I'm hanging out. It's just me and I'm hanging out with my friend over here. Do you guys want to join us? We got pictures. Like, (laughs) that one night would have changed his entire life. And then maybe he would have... (laughs) This blood (laughs) is on the gay community's hands. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And it's not the first time. (laughs) Like... Every school shooter can be traced by we are doing Mash Walsh's work. I love this, this is basically the this is basically the Matt Walsh show, right? What now. a fun arc. <laughs> I can't wait until we're sponsored by the Daily Wire. The like Daily There's Wire probably Plus. adds for the Daily Wire in this video. Oh, ben speaking Shapiro, of Hero, if you want to bank wire me, like do it right the fuck <laughs> now. Speaking of, uh, do you want to do you want to stop for a Daily Wire ad? <laughs> Yeah, please. Don't click on it, guys. <laughs> Just allow it to play. Don't skip it either. We need that no, money. We're, we're so hungry. <laughs> we need Dennis Prager's money. <laughs> I'm dying. I actually think it's based to take their money because nobody in Agreed. like either of our audiences is ever going to click on their ad. So like, sure, maybe I should be they getting their money. money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Like, I'm just going to spend it on, like, poppers and wine. (laughs) So if you're listening, Ben, my bank (laughs) details are 4059. Dale Lawner, the guy who wrote Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and My Cousin Vinny, was a family friend of Elliot Rogers and suggested that Elliot had always seemed broken from the moment of conception. He never thought he would do something violent, but his attempts to give Elliot advice went unheeded. Elliot mentions Dale in the memoir festo. It's it's fucking wild to me that he's like, yeah, my family friend, the guy who wrote My Cousin Vinny. Like, you thought you wouldn't make your millions as a writer? Like, you were surrounded by famous writers. Like, and nepotism is the way to get in. It is the only sure yeah. way. The fact that he was like, there's no chance of me being a screenwriter. I mean, Better what do I have? Better go win the lottery. <laughs> Like, like it's just like this. This bitch, the coconut, was hollow. Yeah, like no juice. Like it's <laughs> there's no juice. She's all dried up. <laughs> no milk in that coconut. No <laughs> lime either. <laughs> no, no meat either. It's just no like meat. this. This this hairy just little furry like shell. Jelly husk. <laughs> like what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> Like, he could have written literal garbage, had it sent off to one of the family friends, and they would have been like, we'll get, I don't know, I'll get like- We'll get someone to do rewrites. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We'll do rewrites. We'll sit down with him. You can't throw any drinks, though, again, the next time someone tells him that this this line did- Elliot, put that- Put put the orange juice down. I I said no drinks in here. Can you take that out? (laughs) Okay, I love the idea of like when when he's at dinner, they're at like the whole family is sitting down to dinner with like the extended fam, the cousins, and everything, and he starts to get mad at the table, and everyone's just like, "Oh my god, all their glasses have to have screw tops on them. They can't have like wine glasses at the table. They have to have bottles because Elliot can't stop throwing his drinks." Like child safety locks Silly on all of the drinks. Queen. <laughs> it's like, oh no, here she goes. <laughs> Just Again. Like, pawn- like, <laughs> Would everybody- be fucking iconic if he didn't kill people. <laughs> Everybody's sitting at Thanksgiving dinner and they're made of the mist ponchos. <laughs> like- <laughs> Pulling the hood up when you see that he starts to get a little red in the face. <laughs> when his little fist starts. <laughs> You're like, oh. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Here we go. Said Dale of Elliot, in one of the last emails I sent to him, I became quite frustrated. I pointed out that he had the choice to change his circumstances. And if he didn't make the effort, then he had to take some of the blame. He insisted that I have to blame someone for my troubles and I don't blame myself. People did try to help him. He was getting support, but he was such a sad little character. Whenever you saw him, he was always unhappy. I recall a mutual friend saying to me once, I've never seen Elliot smile. So it's exactly like what we what like yeah. what has what it has sounded like this entire time. Like he outright said, I have to blame someone and I don't blame myself. <laughs> like it's literally somebody's <laughs> fault. <laughs> Whose fault? Off. Oh, I can tell you one Who thing, can say? not mine. <laughs> Like, there's literally no way to know. But what I do know is that it's not mine. That I am blameless in this. Yeah. I am I, literally unaccountable. So I think we all have people in our lives who, like, yeah. there's always something wrong. Yeah. And if you try to offer solutions, they shoot down every single one. Because, like, yeah. the point is not to have a solution to their problems. Mm-hmm. It's It's just... To bitch and moan. And like, like I'm okay with bitching and moaning sometimes. I love a good vent. I love a good bitch. I am a cunt. But like, the, like mm-hmm. I find this kind of personality unbearable. Where like they are oh, just like, yeah. determined to be miserable. And yeah. also determined. It's determined to be miserable. Because even when I'm miserable, I'm still able to like rally a bit. 
like yeah. to to find a way to maybe not be like fun to be around but not like to ruin every single moment you spend together <laughs> Like Mm -hmm. there's like these, the, the people that do this are the people that eventually you stop taking calls from. Yeah. Like, (laughs) because they are committed to misery. Like they are committed to the aesthetic of misery rather than just being in a miserable place for a while. I'm super into and have to, like I'm so solutions oriented. Like the second I realize something's wrong, like I am panicked until I find a solution. Right. So like the idea of, and like after I find a solution, I feel better. Even if I haven't like acted solver. on it yet, I'm like, yeah. I have a problem. I've, I feel like I've solved it. I have a path. I know what I need to do next. I have my next steps and I feel like really good about that. That's helpful. So that's the only way I know how to interact with problems being presented to me. Yeah. I can listen. If you just want to listen, if you just want me to listen to you vent and like likely tell you that everyone in the world is wrong but you, like I'll definitely allow that, like fairly often even. But at some point, if I think it's going to be detrimental to you because you're starting to actually believe that there's nothing you can do to fix your life and everything is everybody else's fault, like that's a horrible thing to enable. And like eventually they don't I don't stop talking to them. They stop talking to me because, because right. I stop being because, able to just not say anything. Yeah. Because they get mad at you for offering solutions. Yeah. And I'm sure a and lot of people exactly in Elliot's life were like, yeah, yeah. They were like, fuck this kid. Like, no matter what I do, like he doesn't want to listen. He just wants to complain. He wants to be right about how hard the world is for him. Like he is the Which permanent. Is so frustrating victim. coming from like, someone who is so privileged. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like <laughs> Which is and, why and, listening to him talk about this shit, about like how hard school was for him or whatever. And it's like your parents pulled you out of school for being bullied. And sent like, you to I another was, school. And then sent you to another school. And then sent I, you like, to another school. <laughs> <laughs> like they did everything for you and they tried to connect you with all of their Hollywood friends so that you could like make something of yourself. Like if yeah. I was born into the family he was born into, like fucking Bashback You would have a show on HBO would, right now. Yeah. Bashback <laughs> Productions would be on Netflix. Like Yeah. Like <laughs> it's it's bonkers how yeah. and I, I don't I don't mean this in like a bootstraps way. Um, because I do think I've also had like quite a bit of luck. We've had privileges. Um, and privileges. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but like to start from nothing and build something for yourself and then see people say that they deserve literally millions times more what you have, but they don't want to work for it. Yeah. Like I don't think like – it's not like the student loans thing where I'm like, I paid so you have to. No. But it's like – you aren't entitled to millions of dollars. You aren't no. entitled to fame. You For aren't nothing. entitled to women that you own. <laughs> like everything, he really felt like he deserved everything, but he didn't even have the like annoying, like fucking like alpha grind set mentality no. where he was going to go out and work for it. <laughs> like, he wanted it handed to him. Like he's such a little fucking baby. He's such a petulant little child having his and little it's tantrums. Insane. It's insane that it like within the same document this kid brags about how his mom fucked George Lucas and then is like I never get anything. And it's like <laughs> mommy got to fuck mommy got to fuck Ma- George Lucas and I never get any all I ever get is left behind. <laughs> like <laughs> <sighs> around this same time Elliot starts collecting weapons for just in case. While at home, he reappraised his younger brother Jazz. Quote I realized how much different my brother Jazz was from me at that age. While I was shy, short, and physically weak, Jazz was tall for his age and very social. He had no problem going up to the other boys at the playground and making instant friends. I began to form a bitter envy towards him, though I hid it really well. My little brother Did you? had hmm. My little brother had all the potential to grow up to be a popular kid and live the life I was never able to live. 
I cursed the world for granting my little brother Jazz so many more advantages than me. I tried not to let this ruin my relationship with him. My little brother really looked up to me. He was one of the few people who treated me with adoration, and that made me feel at least a small twinge of self-worth. It was quite surprising that he respected me so much, since I had nothing in my life to boast about to him. He even asked me once if I ever had a girlfriend, and I angrily told him that the matter was none of his concern. I didn't want to admit to him that girls thought I was a loser. If he found out about that, he would respect me less. In order to boost his high opinion of me, I often sugarcoated all of my early accomplishments, such as telling him that I was an expert skateboarder and video game player. <laughs> <laughs> my early accomplishments playing World of Warcraft and learning how to ride a skateboard. And I'm a um, skateboarder. Okay. I'm a super cool skateboarder. I can do so many flips. <laughs> Him being like, that matter is none of your concern. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> it's giving like, like, stay out of the West Wing. <laughs> like, like it's like so yeah. aggressive and like suspicious. It's like, Yelling well, now I know like the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Not even 10 year olds. Yelling this at like a six year old. That matters. None of your concern. <laughs> it's, it's legitimately bonkers behavior. But like, there, there was one, there was one line when he's talking about how like privileged his younger brother is. Yeah. Because his younger because brother walks up to people and makes and friends, makes friends with, with them. And makes friends with them the way all six-year-olds like, do. I'm like, you have a model of behavior right here. Go like, do here, it. Here, 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 go do the same thing. Go make friends Talk with his people. little six-year-old friends. They're like, at least then you can think you're tall. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, you're like perfect, look how big actually. and cool I am. Yeah. I'm a skateboarder. Did you know? <laughs> do you want to see what adult Jazz Rogers looks like? Yeah. Are you sending it on WhatsApp? Yeah. How old is he? In this picture, probably like 19 or 20. He looks like a TikTok star. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Just like, I was like, oh, it's, I was like, oh, what subreddit is this? And it's like <laughs> mass killers. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. That's where I found some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> a little problematic. <laughs> but where else are you going to find people who will stalk the Instagrams of the brothers of former killers? They're braver than the troops. <laughs> Not because so they're true. brave, but because I think it's like pretty cowardly to go to war when it's like braver so than the idea. Peace. Mm -hmm. He eventually resolved that if he were to carry out his day of retribution, he would need to kill Jazz so that Jazz would never grow to be more powerful than him. He also decided. Okay, Scar. Yeah. He also decided fuck? that he needed to kill Sumaya, but th that he couldn't kill his own father. So he'd have to enact his plan on he a day when weak. his father was out of town. Deciding to kill Jazz is... I'm so glad that you sent me that photo first, because now I know he's not dead. Because yeah, I was about to be like, alive. what the fuck? <laughs> he's, he okay. didn't kill... He didn't manage to kill his brother or his stepmother. But that was like his thing. He was like, well, I couldn't kill my father because I love him. Yeah. But I guess I'll have to kill my little brother who looks up to me and my stepmother who has only ever tried to get me help. It's bonkers. While he was at home, so this is all like over the Christmas break, he mm -hmm. also met his sister's new boyfriend and heard them having sex one night. <sighs> I had to read this and now no. you have to hear it. <laughs> Quote, I arrived at the house one day, my mother being at work, and heard the sounds of Samuel plunging his penis into my sister's <sighs> vagina through her closed room door along with my sister's moans. I stood there and listened to it all. Plunging. Plunging. Standing outside know. the door listening to your sister fuck. Like doing the Arthur fist. Like... <laughs> It's so pathetic and gross. Uh, weirdo. Like he I, makes imagine everything Imagine putting weird. that in your memoir. You don't have you to write don't it down. You don't have to put it in. Just because it happened doesn't mean you have to tell us. <laughs> it's like, no, it's my life story. <laughs> you sick freak. Ugh. In April of 2013, Elliot drove to Arizona three more times to buy Powerball tickets, but to no avail. Just not letting it go. <laughs> 
I wonder if he thought that his odds were getting better because like because he was buying more tickets. Yeah, (laughs) gotta win at some point. (laughs) Sunk cost fallacy. (laughs) No, not fallacy. Sunk cost truth. Sunk cost facts. (laughs) <laughs> the more you ever heard of the more you invest, facts the more you invest the more likely it's gonna work out in your favor <laughs> hey boy boy come here i got i got a i got a quick rich get rich quick i, I got a get I got, I got, get quick rich. Got a get, get quick rich scheme for you have you ever heard of sunk cost facts the truest facts you ever heard <laughs> Shuffling cards, do, pushing shells I would do this around myself, on a table. But I have, I would do this myself, but I have no want for money. I'm already so rich, <laughs> and you are too. Look at that beautiful gooky belt. <laughs> gooky, not gooky. One night he got so drunk. <laughs> he had like half a glass of wine. <laughs> and one <laughs> one night he got super drunk on half a glass of wine <laughs> yeah. and wandered into a house party. This is where... (gasps) This is what I remember. Yes. And this is the house party where he berated the Asian guy for having a conversation with a white girl and got kicked out for a bit. So (laughs) after he got kicked out, he wandered back inside and placed himself next to another group of college students. So he's like trying to walk up to people. He's trying to be friends. And he just sits there. He he does one of two things. He Like always, he either just sits there in silence or if he's feeling drunk and brave he'll insult them and think that that's a way to make friends <laughs> which in some he crowds been, it is he, he would have been such, made a such a good gay <laughs> such a good gay it's this such a incense- i know what a waste of a human what a waste what a waste of a twink <laughs> Quote, I rose from my chair and tried to act arrogant and cocky toward them, throwing insults at everyone. They only laughed at me and started insulting me back. <laughs> that was the last. Bitch, if you're going to read a cunt, the cunt's going to read you back. Like, you have to be able to take what you give. <sighs> that was the last straw. I had taken enough insults that night. A dark, (laughs) hate-fueled rage overcame my entire being, and I tried to push as many of them as I could from the 10-foot ledge. My main (gasps) target was the girls. I wanted to punish them for talking to the obnoxious boys instead of me. It was one of the most foolish and rash things I ever did, and I almost risked everything in doing it. But I was so drunk with rage that I didn't care. I failed to push any of them from the ledge because he's weak. Because he's weak. Yeah. (laughs) I failed to push any of them from the ledge and the boys started to push me, which resulted in me being the one to fall onto the street. When I landed, I felt a snap in my ankle, followed by a stinging pain. I slowly got up and found that I couldn't even walk. I had to stumble and stumble I did. I tried to get away from there as fast as I could. So he literally tries to push push like women off of like a balcony <laughs> and then he... Like, after, like, walking up to people and he's like, hey, you ugly bitches. And they're like, yeah, you ugly, skinny baby boy. (laughs) And then he's like, how dare you? (laughs) Me? You insult me? (laughs) And then he breaks his ankle. He broke his ankle. But he still tried to stagger back into the party after he broke his ankle. And a bunch of the dudes stopped him at the door and... Like rocked his show. Oh, hi, Angus. <laughs> hi, Angus. He's here, for, he's here for the story. So, Angus, what happens next is Elliot Roger gets his shit absolutely rocked. He gets he gets Finally. beat the fuck up for the first time in his entire life. He's so privileged. Yeah. Like, Literally, sure, you're not he's having made it sex, years. but you're not being like fucking assaulted sexually or or physically. Like, yeah. he had like such a good fucking life and he's so mad about it 22 years old this is the first time he gets his ass kicked and it's after attempted murder like yeah like (laughs) like literally the first time i've ever been like oh no he literally was asking for it yeah like (laughs) he literally tried to kill women got pushed off of a balcony and then tried to come back for more and the dudes at the party were like oh you want some more let's go so he At this point, he reaches his breaking point. Quote, I concluded that women are flawed. 
There is something <laughs> mentally wrong with the way their brains are wired, as if they haven't evolved like, they're from Delulu. animal-like thinking. <laughs> After I tried to push those women off of a balcony and I got beat up, I concluded they acted that those like women rabid would not be dogs. crazy. <laughs> they are incapable of reason or thinking rationally. They are like animals, completely controlled by their primal, depraved emotions and impulses. That is why they are attracted to barbaric, wild, beast-like men. They are mm. beasts themselves, beasts that should not be able to have any rights in a civilized society. <laughs> if their wickedness is not contained, the whole of humanity will be held. He's talking like the evil queen. I know. Like, <laughs> if their wickedness is not contained, the whole of humanity will be held back from advancement to a more civilized state. Bitch, it's 2014. We have iPhones. Him being like, they are beasts and they're the big strong protective masculine men that protect them are disgusting and if we aren't careful they will come and ravish us all <laughs> if we're not careful these men will fuck us all <laughs> Women should not have the right to choose who to mate with. That choice should be made for them by civilized men of intelligence. If women had the freedom to choose which men to mate with, like they do today, they would breed with stupid, degenerate men, which would only produce stupid, degenerate offspring. This, in turn, would hinder the advancement of humanity. Not only hinder it, but devolve humanity completely. Women are like a plague that must be quarantined. When I came to this brilliant, perfect revelation, I <laughs> felt like everything was now clear to me in a bitter twisted way i am one of the few people on the world who has the intelligence to see this i am like <laughs> a god and my purpose is to exact ultimate uh. retribution on all of the impurities i see in the world okay like it would be scary if it wasn't really... so funny <laughs> <laughs> i am like a god it's like all you realized was you hate women yeah <laughs> like <laughs> Stumbling out of the party, like bleeding from every orifice. <laughs> Limping, like, being like, I, and ankle. I realized. <laughs> I am like I a god. <laughs> like, babe, you look like you just got hit by a truck. Like, you, you are like a pigeon. <laughs> like, like a one-legged like pigeon one hobbling pigeon. home. <laughs> pigeon that got like hair wrapped around its leg. <laughs> <laughs> it just fell off. That's so sad. <laughs> getting getting like your sh the shit kicked out of you because you picked a fight that you couldn't win is yeah. like i can't that's so like, embarrassing i'm usually not pro violence but like somebody that tries is to a situation push you which, over a fucking yeah. balcony somebody yeah. tried to do somebody attempted murder and then came back for more like that is when it is appropriate to rock a guy's shit yeah it's more appropriate than calling the cops <laughs> yeah <laughs> What are the cops going to do? His day of retribution was postponed several times, first because he needed to wait for his leg to heal, then because he woke up with a cold two days before he'd initially planned to do it. <laughs> I can't do it with the sniffles. <laughs> Which is like, yeah, like, I'd be the same if I was like, I'm going to like murder suicide my way through. I'm not going to do it with a cold. Like, yeah, you want to enjoy can you imagine, it. Like, like shooting people like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like you clearly don't want to do this it's like no i'm sick no, i'm not sad <laughs> it's I, almost, I have a head cold <laughs> oh not the the like the stuffed the stuffed sinuses lisp of like <laughs> <laughs> this is my day of retribution <laughs> Not like, you being okay. known as like the stuffed nose spree killer. <laughs> oh my God. His plans were thwarted again when his YouTube uploads prompted a wellness check from the police and he had to lay <gasps> low for a while because he was like uploading <laughs> YouTube videos that whole time like, I guess I'm going to have to kill people. And the police were like, hello, sir. <laughs> We don't think you're a killer based on your beautiful Gucci belt, but just checking. You don't plan on mass murdering people. It's like, no, it's just a funny joke between me and my friend. And they're like, oh, you're <laughs> right. Your friend. 
<laughs> so <laughs> we we should harass your black roommate instead. <laughs> There's got to be someone around here who's done something. <laughs> At this point, his roommates were actually Asian, and that bothered him even more. Yeah, of course it did. Because <laughs> I assume because Chance got the hell out of Dodge after that weird night where he told him when he lost his virginity and he went to his room and cried. <laughs> yeah. And Chance was like, like, so. Leaves in conversation. <laughs> 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 just like wails. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't quiet cry. No. Like he, he wants wails. you to know he's crying. Yeah. yeah. In May of 2014, about 11 months after the house party, Elliot put the final touches on his manifesto. His plans were almost childish in their violence. He planned to kill his stepmother and brother before luring people to his apartment off the street and flay them alive. So this man who like couldn't even talk to girls was like, I'm just going to like ask people to come into my apartment and then I'm going to take their skin off while they're alive. After which he planned on shooting up a sorority and a house party and then driving his car into a bunch of people on the streets. So these kind of mass killings very rarely go according to plan, but his plans <laughs> yeah. were especially deranged in their overconfidence. I am more than human, he wrote in his manifesto. I am superior to them all. I am Elliot Roger, magnificent, glorious, supreme, <laughs> eminent, divine. I am the closest thing there is to a living God. <gasps> Humanity is a disgusting, depraved, and evil species. It is my purpose to punish them all. I will purify the world of everything that is wrong with it. On the day of retribution, I will truly be a powerful god, punishing everyone I deem to be impure and depraved. The last few pages of My Twisted World are the only parts of the document that really resemble a manifesto. There are no political demands, but he outlines his vision for a perfect world. A world yeah. without sex and a world without women. Quote, Sex is by far the most evil concept in existence. No one deserves to experience so much pleasure, especially since some humans get to experience it while some are denied it. The ultimate evil behind sexuality is the human female. They are the main instigators of sex. They control which men mm -hmm. get it and which men don't. Women are flawed creatures, and my mistreatment at their hands has made me realize this sad truth. There is something very twisted and wrong about the way their brains are wired. They think like beasts, and in truth, they are beasts. Women are incapable of having morals or thinking rationally. They are completely controlled by their depraved emotions and vile sexual impulses. Because of this... The men who do get to experience the pleasures of sex and the privilege of breeding are the men who women are sexually attracted to, the stupid, degenerate, obnoxious men. I have observed this all my life. The most beautiful of women choose to mate with the most brutal of men instead of magnificent gentlemen like myself. Magnificent gentlemen. You say as you're about to go on a killing spree. I love that he's like... <laughs> Women are the way their brains are, are wired. He, the is projection wrong. is so bonkers here. He's like it's, they're just sick in the head. They just don't. They don't get how privileged they are. And it's like, <laughs> they want to pick him up by the neck, lift him up in the air, which I could <laughs> because I'm not five nine, and like just shake him. Yeah, just as uh, he shake. like by the scruff of the neck, like a kitten. I want to carry him around in my mouth. <laughs> I want to give him shaken twink syndrome. I will give him shaken twink syndrome and he will learn. I literally did a four part series on Timothy McVeigh and Columbine. And like, this is the most Delulu shit I've ever read. Yeah, absolutely. This is bonkers. <laughs> he states that women shouldn't have the right to choose who they mate and breed with, that women shouldn't have rights. He describes a fantasy world in which all women are placed in concentration camps where all but a very few, small few are starved to death. Those that remain are forcibly bred through artificial insemination. His prose in this section is lurid edgelordism. He's cosplaying as a supervillain. Like, he doesn't mean any of this. He's being extra. Yeah. But like in a fascist kind of way. To try to like outraged the people who are reading it are gonna read it yeah 
Elliot Rogers' day of retribution came on May 23rd, 2014. He stabbed his two roommates, Cheng Wan, <gasps> Cheng Wan Hung, and George Chen, and Wei Han Wang, who was <sighs> visiting the apartment. George Chen sustained 94 stab wounds. <gasps> yeah. He changed clothes, balling his bloody clothes up in his bed sheets before uploading his final video to YouTube. So you don't He's have to He's uploading a video to YouTube with their bodies- no, in he the- um he drives he drives uh it to his BMW to like the the pier or something. Um he's like sitting in a parking lot um like after he okay, changes okay. and everything. Okay. Um you don't have to watch all of it, but I do want you to watch a few minutes just so you can listen to his tone and his rehearsed okay. laughs. Like he this is this is performance. Yeah. Not fair. You girls have never been attracted to me. He needed theater school. I don't know mm-hmm. why you girls aren't Try growing to up me, gay. But I will punish you all for <laughs> it. He's so tiny in this it's car. It's an injustice, <laughs> a crime. Because the wheel I looks don't know what you don't huge. I'm the perfect guy. I'm such a little guy. And yet you throw yourselves at all these obnoxious men. <laughs> I'm the perfect me, guy. The supreme gentleman. Supreme gentleman is really funny. <laughs> it is funny. That's what they've all like latched on to. But it's like No, it's so it's cringe. So cringe. <laughs> <laughs> it on sounds like a fucking Taco Bell order. I am going to enter. I can I get a Supreme Gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> he took Golden Hour like way too far here. <laughs> it's so golden hour. It's so like blown out. Blown. Okay. So like the way he like he doesn't genuinely laugh. He has like like plotted in like <laughs> fake laughs. He goes <laughs> like where he was like like it's clearly on the script that he's reading. Now like laugh yeah. and make it sound cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the cadence is not for me, I would say. <laughs> I'm not it's a made fan. Up. It's he's like this so is my villain speech. Forced. Yeah. It's like these girls, what they've done to me, I can't let them get away with it. The the it's one so moment overacted. where he was like, <laughs> like, what are you doing? He's like really playing for the angles. back row. <laughs> yeah. Like, he has great angles. It's I was like, holy shit. I wish I had his fucking bone structure. I wish I had that jawline. He was like, like he was right about being fabulous. <laughs> Like yeah, like home homeboy had like he was born with his bucal fat removed bucal bucal yeah. bucal bucal I think it's bucal, bucal. but I could be he wrong. Was, he was born bucless. Yeah, like such like <laughs> he was great jawline, cursed. He great... was primped. Yeah. Like he was like no girls have ever been attracted to me, and I don't know why. And it's like, well, you're gorgeous, and you know it. So, hmm, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if there's the something other else. Might be. Yeah, like, no. all the girls who were like, this, oh my God, the cute guy's coming up to us. And then he, like, throws a soda in their face. <laughs> <laughs> like, sprays them with orange juice. She goes home and cries. It's like I had a crush on him for weeks and I was finally getting up the nerve to talk to him. And he did it right before I was going for my appointment down at the Blondery. Like, <laughs> <laughs> everything was his fault it's like yeah it's like it's like those it's like those shows or movies where not not like an anti-hero but like somebody who's like a an adorable doof and yeah. everything goes wrong and it's their fault but you love them anyways it's like that but without the you love them anyways yeah because like this and is it's not adorable no 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 but, but that's like what makes it like a car crash is like yeah he really was born with everything he was born with so much privilege he he was beautiful like he he was serving cunt yeah he was born with money <laughs> like but he he just like it's like a great money is tragedy. so wasted on the wealthy the way he like, like the way he just like Threw away everything. For nothing. For nothing. He emailed his manifesto to over 30 people, including his father, his therapist, and Hollywood screenwriter Dale Lawner, then went to a sorority 
where he knocked on the door for a long time and nobody answered. Can I wait? Can I ask a question? Maybe you'll know yeah. the answer. Do you know when people read it? Like when? Like how, when they how got quickly the email. people read like it? Like he how quickly the they were of. reacting to that? No, no, yeah, but like how quickly people happening. reacted to it. Okay, while okay. it was happening. Like I was wondering if like how long is it? Like the shooting? No, no, the manifesto. Oh, like like a novella. It's like 130 pages. Okay, because so I'm just like wondering. So they don't get wondering... to the part. Where he yeah. says what he's gonna do until like much. That's later. what I was wondering, and like how yeah. how how quickly they realized that this was like leading to something. I violent. think a lot of them like, knew I'm right just... away that it was a suicide note, but but they didn't realize yeah. until. But like, not everybody was like taking the time to like read it all the way. Exactly. Through. Like yeah. people were calling the police right away. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Eventually, he gave up on his plan to shoot up a sorority because because nobody was answering the door. Because <laughs> they were and, <laughs> and shot at people walking around outside. Oh, Catherine God. Cooper and Veronica Weiss were killed outside the Alpha Pi oh, sorority. And then he then shot and fired into a deli and killed Christopher Martinez. He exchanged gunfire with police and was struck in the hip before crashing his BMW and shooting himself in the head. All of his victims were between the ages of 19 and 22. 14 Ugh. additional people were injured. In her memoir, Chanel Miller, the Emily Doe from the 2016 Brock Turner mm -hmm. case, reveals that she was a student at UCSB when the Isla Vista ma massacre took place. She recounts she and her roommates locking themselves inside as reports of the shooting filtered through text messages and played on the news. She recalled reading Elliot Rogers' manifesto, being chilled by his rage. Her memories of Elliot Roger played a significant role in Brock Turner's sentencing. She didn't want Turner to become filled with the same mis misogynistic rage as Roger, and her desire for a more rehabilitative process with interventions to prevent that was leveraged to Turner's benefit. So she specifically, like when, when it was coming to the sentencing, yeah. his team called her on the phone, like kind of unfairly, called her mm -hmm. and they were like, well, what do you want? And she was like, I want something rehabilitative because like I've seen what kind of like this this like violent mm -hmm. misogyny leads to and they were like okay so like three months then right <sighs> forums like PUA hate and r slash brain cells were shut down following the Isla Vista killings but when Elliot was on his rampage several active members of the forums recognized one of their own from an article in the New York Times, on the night of the killings, members of Mr. Rogers' online world instantly drew the connection between the violence in Isla Vista and the man they had been jousting with online. Could someone tip off the police just in case, one wrote, even as six people had already died at Mr. Rogers' hand? Why, another one asked. Don't, someone else posted. Whatever happens, we didn't do anything, so just let it happen if it does. <sighs> Following the attacks, the hashtag not all men trended on Twitter to express that not all men are misogynistic and violent. Oh, good. I feel safe now. <laughs> the hashtag yes, all women was formed in response to communicate that all women experience misogyny. In Manosphere communities online, especially in incel communities, Elliot was canonized as the supreme gentleman Elliot Roger. <laughs> to commit acts of mass violence is often euphemized on these forums as going ER. Some of these posts, maybe even most of them, were ironic, but enough were sincere. On April 23rd, 2018, a 25-year-old software developer by the name of Alex Manassian drove his car into a crowd of people in Toronto, killing mm -hmm. 11 and injuring 15. Shortly before the attack, he'd posted on his Facebook... Private Recruit Manassian, Infantry 00010, wishing to speak to Sergeant 4chan, please. C2324961, the incel rebellion has already begun. We will overthrow all the Chads and Stacys. All hail the Supreme Gentleman, Elliot Roger. So that's the story of Elliot Roger. How are you feeling, Galen? So I remember Manassian, because Toronto, and I remember hearing about it like as it was happening and I had friends who worked in like the building that was outside of where the police arrested him like where the like the showdown was so we were like texting like like everyone that I know was texting people that worked in that building that we all knew and it was like that 
it wasn't like a it wasn't the same thing as knowing that someone has like a gun because I find that that's like way scarier to me than somebody like obviously you can really hurt people with a with a vehicle but like there's something so like indiscriminate about right. a gun and like especially with these like and automatic weapons yeah, yeah where you can there's like bullet spray right, right. um i'm like these I, the the likelihood that anyone that i knew would be on the road versus like in their office building was like really low but i remember right. that being like the first time i was like oh like there are people like this isn't an american thing like I knew that things like that had happened in Canada like prior, but it, it still felt very American, which I guess like the incel movement did originate from America, but it's not exactly like localized. There are people not there are people mad about not having sex everywhere. But like this And inspired by killers everywhere. I did not remember about the like all hail supreme gentleman or whatever at the end of that that was so nasty yeah he became like their patron saint and he's such a loser too like even yeah. by his own account <laughs> like that's such a that's so pathetic worshiping him <laughs> like, the good work that he was we're like doing a... <laughs> is revealing what a loser he is yeah a weak little baby <laughs> Okay, well, thank you for that. I'm so glad that... Thank you for not making the murders super long and detailed. I really appreciated that yeah, we didn't no. have to focus on that. Not a call Yeah, I no, wanted to that focus really on f- his cringiness. Yeah, that really fucked me up <laughs> with the Columbine one, um, which is not on video, but is on our backlog of uh, audio right. only, if anybody wants to listen to it. Hoots did an amazing job on those. Thanks, Kaylin. Maybe don't maybe social. listen on the on the bus or something <laughs> but like <laughs> don't listen if you don't want to cry yeah <laughs> you can follow respect the dead on all platforms at underscore respect the dead you can follow kaylin at kaylin conrad on all platforms and you can follow me at punished hoots on twitter and hoots youtube on youtube uh you can <laughs> find us at you can find us on patreon at patreon.com slash respect the dead where patrons have access to our episode autopsies exclusive mm. minisodes that accompany each episode and patrons at the weirdos tier and above can also submit suggestions for future episodes in our suggestion cemetery yeah I'll come See make it weird week, freaks <laughs> bye bye bye